All right, we're ready to go. Let's play pickleball. Jay Devillier to serve. And there's that Point. wicked one-handed backhand of the Frenchman to start. Yeah, we've been talking about that this morning too, Dave, with some of these players coming out with that one-handed backhand now and pretty much none better than Devillier. He's been doing that for years now. 1-0. Reach for days. He just covers the court so well. Again, length plays a huge part in singles, but also that length matched up with his athleticism. Side out. Goes for the serve, just gets a little too much, and Patrickin's first zero, touch two. on the serve. Point. Devillier trying to do just a little too much with that cut right there, but again, it's trying to find this rhythm early One, for these players. Point. And the most stunning thing on this court is the sun and the shadows. I mean, it was a disaster two, two. earlier today, and now we are playing ball in the sun. And Point. some big serves from Patrick Quinn, and quickly Three, two. five points have been scored in this match already. Yeah, do not leave a ball up to Devillier like that. That's just going to get punished. Your kitchen line to kitchen line, 14 feet apart with a big Frenchman right there. That forehand is not coming back. Yeah, he's got such a reach advantage, so it would be surprising to see Patrick can win a lot of that in this Two, match. Point. Big serves being rewarded, Don. Three, yeah, three. All, both of these guys. What a get from Patrick Quinn to put another ball in play. Wow, I mean, just able to get that and force De Villiers to have to put a ball away. I mean, Four, the no-look forehand. Yikes, and another, another miscue on a return. And we've had eight points in like three minutes of action here. 5-3 De Villiers. Side out. Little miss hit on an attempted drop shot there on a weak return from Patrick Quinn right to the middle of the court. I think the Villiers, Three, my choice would have been a drive down the sidelines. Yeah, too many options. His head exploded. And that's just beautiful from Patrick Quinn inside out. It's tough to find an angle from the mid. Four, five. Side out. Ooh, Patrick Quinn is there, but just kind of overhits that. I don't know if he got a little excited, the fact that he was there and, and did cover Five, so well. Side out. Another short return that Davillier cannot take advantage of. So again, Four, five. round of 16 here, just underway again here at the Side out. beautiful center court love we went out and played on the court earlier dom the black and gray is really good visual for the play yes it is we really liked it we had a lot of fun out there earlier Point. i see your inside out forehand and i raise you says jay and davillier looks like he's looking to go to that side with patrick quinn and almost tempting him into that and it's Six it's hurt four. him a couple times here but now he gives it back De Villiers with a ridiculous get in the middle of that point, but Patrick Quinn hangs in there and wins the hands battle. Yeah, and again, we, we said that we did not like Patrick Quinn getting in the hands battle with De Villiers up there, but he comes out on top of that, Four. so evens it up, a one hands battle Four, apiece six. between the two of them. Big Four. serve again, so, up uh, oh, and uh, all right. Referee uh, going to get a warning on himself there for throwing the ball away from young Hayden Patrick in there. That was awesome. <laughs> Patrick looked at him like, Five, that really just happened? Oh, dear. Side out. You hate when that happens. I mean, I'm sure you just want everything Six, to be five. normal. Mm -hmm. 
Again, ridiculous footwork there, but Patrick couldn't have a ball to get down earlier in that rally and couldn't do it. Yeah, he did, and he missed his opportunity right there, that one, I think, where you know he needs to put that ball away because against De Villiers, you don't have that many opportunities, and when you're given those opportunities, you have to capitalize. Timeout receiver, 7-5, one minute. So a lot of points on the board early here on both sides of the net. Big serves, missed returns. 7-5, De Villiers, glad to have you and glad to see the sun shining. My name. Welcome back to the Carvana PPA toward that good look at Jay De Villiers. Got a two-point lead here early in game number one. It's picking on the backhand, Dom. Yeah, good start for De Villiers right after the timeout from Patrick Quinn. Again, going to that backhand. He wants to avoid the Patrick Quinn forehand that he's running around right now. Skips the line yeah. right there, Dave. Yeah, if you weren't sure on whether that was in or not, the rocket propulsion off the line there tells you all you need to know about where that happened. You get that in pickleball off the lines. Oh, and then Point. speaking of getting something off of something, there it is, clips the tape perf perfectly for, well, Jay may not think perfectly, no. but Hayden certainly does. It's all a matter of perspective. Yes. 6-8. What a read from Devilliers again. In singles, the anticipation is such a key. You always talk about Ben Johns, one of the best anticipating players on the tour. De Villiers shows why he is too. Side out. And that return paints the line. So uh, Patrick Quinn trying to hang in there just within two here. Game number one. This is round of 16. We're playing best two out of three. No change to that. Point. And a missed return for De Villiers. And it's three here so far for him. Seven, eight. Hate to give it away. That's what the value of a serve does. Point. And De Villiers just can't get that down. He, he was there in position, just can't get on top of that. Almost looked like he attempted to eight, baby eight. the last one here and aim it. Point. And after being down big, Patrick Quinn has come all the way back and has the 9-8 lead. 9-8. And another problem Point. with the return. Timeout and receiver. A frustrated De Villiers calls timeout. So a timeout called by that young man before sort of settled down the rally. And now he has rallied. So it is Patrick Quinn up and he'll have game point on his paddle when we come back. Each player has Welcome back everybody. Remaining. That man, that teenager Five. has come back and Eight. has the first game point of this match on his paddle. Side out. Trying to come in and take that last one out of the air and end it with an exclamation point there, Dave. Just misses it, but I like the effort, I like the aggressiveness yeah. from Patrick Quinn right Certainly there. Certainly didn't play tight on game point. Point. And a beautiful follow your best shot in choice from De Villiers there. Well, it's a veteran move, right? Time out, make the young buck think about it. He doesn't win it, right? De Villiers comes back, evens it up. Now we're all square. That puts us at 10 apiece, and it's going to take more than 11. I mean, it's just a veteran right here, a veteran player in De Villiers right here, coming all the way back, doing what he needs to do. Yeah, that's a strong volley on ten, the ten. replay there. And Oh, my. What a Side wicked out. return, though. Got... I'm going to give him the benefit of doubt off the tape just because that return was so good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Nice return, like you said, Dave. Ten, Gets ten. a lot of love off the tape there. What? What? Side out. All right, now we're hearing our first uh, 
De Villiers self encouragement plan. You'll hear it throughout this match. Ten apiece. And we've seen a bunch of short returns, Dom. He finally took advantage. And the best part about that was he didn't overhit it. He just took his time. He created some shape on it, found the corner, and now he gives himself his first game point here in game number one. So we've got Patrick Quinn calling timeout now after De Villiers had to save a game point himself. And folks, Vint is a terrific new partner of ours. I'm thrilled to have him. It is such a unique thing. As commentators, Dom, you know we love outstanding returns. We oh. just saw one right there from Hayden Patrick. Lynn. Sets up the whole point. It does. Well, it turns out so does Vin, an investment platform working to provide returns through alternative assets. They make it possible for investors big and small to diversify their portfolio with fine wine and rare spirits. That's right, SEC qualified offerings that you can add to your investment portfolio. Learn, learn more at vent.co. Thank you, Vint, for being a part of the PPA tour. 15 seconds. So, one game point saved by De Villiers. Now he's got one on his paddle. Patrick Quinn taking every last second of that timeout to make De Villiers out. think about this as he comes back in no to try and remaining. defend this game point. Time in, 11 10. Oh, rolls wow. across the tape, but stays on De Villiers' side. So side out, game point saved on both sides. It peaked, but it never came over. <laughs> oh, and another missed return. My goodness, five times for De Villiers here. Usually you miss five returns. You have already switched sides, so... Uh, 11, 11. 11, 11. Side out. And good job by De Villiers finding the Patrick Quinn backhand. He doesn't want to avoid that inside out forehand that he had success with, finds the two handed backhand and is able to 11, control 11. the point. Oh, and. De Villiers leaves one up, and Patrick Quinn had too many choices. Smashes it into the net, and a second 12, 11. game point for De Villiers. And another one off the net. The first one rolled on his side, took a peek at the real estate on the other side, stayed over. This one ends up on the same side as well, but not the way Jay wanted, so we will play on. Oh my, out. good scamper from Patrick Quinn, but couldn't get there. He almost had that right there on the backhand side as De Villiers went for the Ernie. That was an all or nothing move from De Villiers. If Patrick Quinn's able to get that up and over, De Villiers not there. 12-11. Third game point. And we talked about returns with our friends at Vent. What a great return there by Patrick Quinn. Yeah, he pulled De Villiers way outside that sideline side right there Love and it. forces that error. No, no. Side out. Man, terrific handle of the inside out forehand from Patrick Quinn by De Villiers. Fourth 12, game point. And Patrick Quinn pays the price Game. for a off-speed return in the middle of the court. De Villiers saves a match point, or excuse me, a game point, down 10-8, and comes back and takes game one 13-11. So the four seed has game number one in his pocket. Can he keep it going? We will find out. Game number two coming back.
Welcome back, everybody. Dave Fleming with Dominic Catalano. And we waited for the sun to clear, and then we got a 13-11. So thank you, Mother Nature, for letting us play some pickleball tight game. De Villiers saves a game point. And we'll see what happens here in game number two. Oh, that's pretty. Wow, I mean, he makes it look so easy, and it's not. He takes that ball from about two inches off the ground and rolls it right past the forehand of Patrick Quinn. Oh, to be 6-3. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Patrick Quinn had a bunny there and just didn't hit down on it, pushed it deep. A little question about the call, but Devillier calls as fair a line as anybody in the game. Mm -hmm. That ball's out. And so that this, was, that this, was weird. Yes, it was. And what I was going to say, David, sorry for interrupting, but what this is a big moment here for Patrick. Yes. You cannot let it get off the rails here. And a good return. Yes. Right, okay, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a, a huge point and a huge moment right there for Patrick Quinn in this match. Don't let it get to three. Hold it there. Keep your head. Yeah, that ball's got to get down with the big man coming forward again. Uh, short return that could have, there are a lot of choices there. Wishes he had that one back. So 2-0, see if De Villiers can add to the lead in that. Best point of the match, and Patrick Quinn has another chance, and he actually lost that point twice. Had a foot in the in the kitchen and then missed the forehand deep. So you don't get two points, though, Dom. Wow, I mean, he had so many opportunities here to win that point. point. You can't do it. And then, oh, the unforced error on the return to serve. Timeout receiver. So he's missed Four both zero. returns on the left side of the court, and your concern has risen mm -hmm. its uh, head here. Is, that is 4 nothing. And Patrick Quinn is going to sit down and think about it. So, can the teenager find his best stuff and mentally recover? We'll see after this. Welcome back. There's what happens when you play with the ball before the timeout and you try to show the crowd you can juggle it and you click it off your paddle. So, uh, Jay had to go chase it down there. Uh, <laughs> Tough start here of game two for Patrick when this is a big rally right here and got another error and a little frustration in the body language. Yeah, and when you have someone of the caliber of De Villiers and he's recognizing that, he's going right at Patrick when he's forcing these errors. And that is just absolute <laughs> wow. filth from De Villiers. What a one-hander right there from De Villiers, a la Roger Federer, and it's just clean. Six zero. Just a rope winner, six nothing. Oh Point. no, and now it is unraveling. Seven zip here in game number two. Patrick Quinn had a game Seven point zero. at 10 eight in game number one. There's the Side first out. misfire of this second game by De Villiers, but what a start. Now the key here is Patrick Quinn does not want to try and hit an eight run home run. That doesn't <laughs> exist here. So one at a time. We talked about it earlier, Dave. This isn't rock and jock, no. right? Back in the day exactly. where you got a five, 10 point shot. You can only score one at a time. He's got to just group them together, right? Get one here, Zero, add on one at a time. Don't try and get them all back here at once. Side out. Smart singles pickleball there. Yeah, I mean, De Villiers is just controlling everything right here. He's controlling the point. He's moving Patrick Quinn where he wants. Seven it's zero. just total control here in game number two from De Villiers. That is a tremendous point Side from Patrick out. Quinn. Starting with dealing with a serve in the corner pocket there is as good as you get. But you watch the De Villiers, he's forcing Patrick Quinn to hit another ball every time. Point. Oh, young Buck is on the board here. Now let's see if he can put a crooked number up here and get back in this game. Seven. 
That is a ridiculous volley Side off a out. very good two-handed backhand, Dom. That drop was disgusting from Patrick Win, right? One. And De Villiers does something with it, right? It's just so hard. Point. That's a great combination there down the line and then drops it ever so delicately in the kitchen. Eight. Eight one. One De Villiers. Side out. Yeah, good control there from Patrick Quinn up at the kitchen line. Again, he needs to do that. He needs to start putting some pressure on Devillier and kind of, you know, shoot from the hip here. You're down 1-8. He's got to answer and do something. Side out. Good leave from uh, the Wichita, Kansas man, Devillier. Patrick Quinn is a California Eight youngster. One. Side out. The swing looked pretty, but the result did not look as uh, pretty as the one a few rallies ago. So side out, it's go time though right now. Got to at least get a couple here. Point. That's a good forehand winner there from Patrick Quinn. And again, gets on top of that one, sets his feet nicely, not out of control, and Two, just eight. winner down the line on Devilliers. Oh, and a little Point. shape on the Tui. That's very nice from Patrick Quinn. And again, he's got to group some here together, and he's starting to with two in a row. Three he in. went forehand on that line. Now two-handed backhand. Side out. Really nice cut return from Devillier there. So two for Patrick Quinn here. Key is good returns and get the ball back quickly. 8-3. Point. Return was deep and confirmed. Yes. Patrick Quinn confirming with both yes. referees and that anyone the ball's else. out in the <laughs> front row, anyone yes. in the back row. Side out. Again, that was all dictated on Patrick Quinn's return. He went hard to the corner, forces De Villiers. He comes up and then Three goes nine. opposite corner. That's what he needs to do. He needs to dictate these points here. Point. So the passes are dialed in a little better here. Is it too little, too late? We shall see. 4-9 in game two. Four nine. Just, just missing that sideline, Dave. Side wow. <laughs> Saw him set up to roll it. Nine heavy four. left hand just pulled it a little too much. Point. Unbelievable reach by Devillier after Patrick Wynn was ahead that entire rally. I thought he had two winners, and he didn't because Devillier's reach, and then this one right here, I like Patrick Quinn taking that out of the air, but he's just got to execute. There we go. Match point for De Villiers. Oh, and that is going to be a clean winner, but it skids off the tape, and that is just enough to push it wide. 4-10. Patrick Quinn on life support here. Point. Love the decision, yes. right? He could have went sideline to sideline, and he just goes right at the body of Devilliers. But it's not the body because Devilliers was guessing forehand. Five ten. Beautiful job by Patrick Wynn. Side out. Can't make the next one, so match point number two for the four seed. Ten five. And that rolling <laughs> net on game, or in this case, match point, rears its ugly head again. That's three times that a game would have ended, except five, no, 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 the match will continue, says the net. 
point. And Davillier caught guessing on the forehand again there, and Patrick Wynn beats him cleanly. 6 10. Set up on a big serve from Patrick Quinn, short return from De Villiers, Six, and Hayden Patrick Quinn able to come in inside out forehand winner. Way too high inside on the out. next one. So, keeps creeping up a little bit at a time. Again, though, will the clock strike midnight here? Third try for De Villiers right here. Patrick Quinn is. Now, there's multiple Onyx Dura Fast 40s being chucked onto the court. We found one we like. Here we go. And Patrick Quinn is there again. Stares down a couple tough balls from De Villiers, and we will continue. Big answer from the young Patrick Quinn to stay in this match. Fights off his third Match point. Six ten. Side out. Again, if you can't get the ball to bounce against the big man, it's a problem. Yeah, missed opportunity because he had another good serve. Short return. Ten, six. I'd have liked to see him rip that ball down the line. He went cross court soft, too high. Fourth try, oh. and that will Left do foot. it. Point. All right, we into the net. Fault, however you want to say it. It is the flying Frenchman. Jocelyn de Villiers wins, saves a game point in game number one, takes that 13-11, and then convincingly in game two, the experience, the reach, and that veteran showmanship in one filthy backhand. Especially we love that one one-hander in the middle. So de Villiers will move on. He will face the winner of Hunter Johnson and Christian Alshon in the quarters. That will be a doozy no matter yes. who wins that one. And we will have more. Outstanding pickleball from now sunny Austin. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. The ladies are on center here at the Onyx Austin Showdown, powered by Invited. Brooke Buckner's a player on the rise. Tell us about her. Yeah, she's got a great game. She's got some good partners coming up this whole season that she's playing with. I like her style, um, kind of an unknown still, right? Still trying to prove herself. This would be a statement match for her against Catherine Parento, who is playing as well as any female on tour right now, Dave. Oh, without question. Parento has won back-to-back -back singles titles. Is the first person to do that other than Anna Lee Waters since Simone Jargim in February of 21. So it's just not something we've seen. Parento was outrageous in Daytona Beach last week. Beat Anna Lee Waters in two. Anna Lee hadn't lost since June of 22. And we always wonder, can you back that up? Not only did she back that up and win singles, she played with Anna Lee Waters, won that. And then she and Tyson McGuffin have a great run, and she takes silver mm -hmm. and mixed. That lady right there is on fire. Game one, time in. This will be a fun one zero, here. Zero. Let's play pickleball. And let's, let's paint a line on the first ball we hit on center, too. Why not? When you're feeling it, you're feeling it. And she just looks like she is just picking up right where she left off in Daytona. One, zero. Boy, that's a nice ball on the Side run out. from Buckner. Buckner is from North Carolina, as is the aforementioned Colin Schick. So North Carolina, welcome. Your pro zero, player one. experience is absolutely on the rise. That's just great control at the kitchen line there from Buckner. And again, you see a lot of the ladies game, they'll play baseline to baseline. You're gonna see Buckner come up when she needs to, and she's gonna come up when she sets up a really nice ball, gets Parento on the move. Oh, oh wow, Dave. I mean, the look on your face right now, that is an absolutely filthy forehand drop. Okay, Brooke Buckner, welcome to center and welcome to Austin. And same girl. After an unbelievable yes. forehand, 
misses the serve, but that's part of the game. But nice start for Buckner, a couple of really pretty balls. See the wind kicking up in the skirt there of Catherine Parento. So keep an eye on that, how that affects the game play here on center. Just didn't get enough under that two-hander. I think she was trying to come in, too, at the same time. Three, two. Side out. A little too much there for Parento. Two, three. Oh my, and that drops in there for Parento. Out. And I'd like to see Buckner try and drop one of those in instead of continuously driving at Parento who wants the pace and she'll handle that pace with ease. I'd like to see Three, her drop two. one in, roll one to the sideline. Side out. So good. Ball a little wide, I yeah, guess. Okay. We, we both thought that was thought possibly was in. Possibly in, just wide. And that's just wide as well. So. But again, you watch Parento right there. She puts pressure on Buckner, so not allowing Buckner to get her feet set and get under control. So it's the constant pressure from Parento. That is a great Side return out. from Buckner. So Parento pushes another one wide. So the left sideline has been a uh, focal point here, much to the chagrin of all players. Side Boy, out. that first two in it back in was mashed by Brooke Buckner. Mashed potatoes, her favorite food in the whole <laughs> wide world there, Dom. So. Uh, didn't make the forehand after it. Three, we need to confirm that after the match. 100% true. <laughs> Go ahead and ask it. Research. And, and now she misses that shot right there, right? But I don't mind that at all. I like that. I think that's how she's going to continue to, to add onto her side here. And to get back in this is by Four, slowing two. the pace down. That's a great approach shot from Parento there. Hey, go, going to battle against that power error and Catherine Parento right now Five, is two. just not the answer for Buckner. Side out. Again, same spot. A few balls have been missed wide on that uh, left side of Buckner's Five. backhand there. Oh, and that was the one you were looking yeah. for. Again, the execution not quite there. If she's able to get that in, Parenteau can't attack that. If she does, it's going to be a tough Five, attack. Two. Bookner can close ground right there. So she's got to set that up. I like it again. She's got to execute. Side out. Buckner approaches middle, takes the angle away, gets a mistake. So good look at 30-year-old Brooke Buckner right there. Two, five. Side out. Also, obviously, have to mention the Michigan Buckner, Michigan State Parento rivalry that is right here on this five, court, two. too. What a reach on the ball before that by Parento, and then just smartly doesn't try to do too much. It's so easy to do too much with that ball oh. right there. It's sitting up, you have the court wide open, you want to put an exclamation Six, point two. on it, but she does exactly what she needs to do right there and just punch it down. Gorgeous forehand from Buckner there. 
You can see that tennis background in the strokes. When she gets a hold of one, it is a beautiful strike. Well, she sold it, too. It almost looked like she was going to go inside out, and then she whipped that back across her body for the winner. Side out. And had a good, good swing at that one. Just comes up short. So a few execution challenges on the backhand here for Buckner, where she would have had a chance to dig into this four-point deficit. That is a great get Side by out. Buckner, not just to get there, but do something with it, Dom. Yeah, she didn't just get there, like you said, Dave. She actually put something on that. I think Parento was kind of shocked that she did. I think she thought she was just going to flip this back up here. Two, but she actually hits a good shot that's dropping as it gets over the net. Beautiful overhead there by Buckner as Parento took off for the other side. Going back door with the overhead is often a very smart solution in singles. 3-6. Wow, so good from Parento, especially after the two-handed backhand that was cracked. And Buckner was all over that two-hander right there, and then she just got put on her heels by Parento on a great get. Six, three. Offense to defense in a flash for Parento. Side out. Dave, that two-hander right there, cross court from Buckner, I mean, she's just hitting it so clean and so well. I like that when she has Parento back by the baseline to keep her back, that's fine. Pace, not a problem from Brooke Buckner. Another one where Buckner thinks she's hit a volley winner and Parento gets there and keeps it safe. I almost looked away. I thought it was a winner, a clean winner from Buckner, Six, but three. Parento all over the court just getting that, forcing another ball. Yes. And another Side beautiful out. dipping two-handed backhand from Buckner. Now she needs to find a couple of these where she's been in good position at the net, just Parento's been able to find the defense. Oh, that's such a tough lead from Parento. We all want to hit that ball right there. It's a hitter's game, hit the ball. <laughs> what a great Six, eye and what an important skill in pro pickleball to be able to recognize that ball is going out, let it go. I was just going to say that Buckner's done such a good job on side outs. She hasn't given up a point in like four in a row. And then right on cue, she hits a missed or gets a missed return in the net. Seven, three. Look at the effort from Buckner, but just can't quite get there in time. Parento just in control. She, she went left-handed yes. forehand on the sideline there. She was full extension. The number two seed looking very good here in Austin. Can she keep it up? Welcome back, everybody. We've been talking about those nimble feet of Catherine Parento, and there are those Skechers that are holding those feet. Love having Skechers as a partner here. Signature shoes coming out now. These players have head to toe somebody that wants to be a part of their game. Time in. Eight, three. Point. Hate to miss a return coming out of the timeout. Yeah, and it's on her, on her timeout and then makes a mistake right away. Side that out. serve goes deep. Uh, can't thank the officials enough. That's Anita Johnson Flores, Three, the lead, and James Otto is our second referee. Uh, that would be the no-fly zone right there. 
So difference right there. So Buckner hit a off speed ball when Parento was back at the baseline. That allows her to come in. She's got to hit that off speed ball when Parento's up at the kitchen line. And just absolutely beautiful. Parento set her feet. We showed those sketchers. Your feet have to be in position to hit this shot. Beautiful inside out. And we are at a game point. Oh, runs around it inside in, and what an exclamation point. Hey, do you think Catherine Parento can bring that huge game she had in Daytona to Austin? The answer is emphatically yes. Catherine Parento, 11. Buckner, three. Will she keep it going? We'll find out, but my goodness, Parento looking fantastic here on center court. Welcome back, everybody. Dave Fleming with Dom Catalano. Game two. Teacher and coach zero, of zero. this great game. Thrilled to have him here. And Brooke Buckner's got to get going here, get off to a good start in game number two and was in great position to do just that, but caught the net. I was like jumping out of my seat right there because it was great point construction from Buckner right off zero, the bat. Zero. Did exactly what we were talking about, just didn't execute in the end. Side out. A gimme there for Buckner. Gets that side out back. She'll take it. Mm -hmm. Zero, zero. Ball. Oh, so we called a fault on a ball that bounced though. Oh, no, but the ball bounced. So the ball bounced here and they called Catherine and a fault. So referee error. Unbelievable get on that too, by the way, but she short hopped it perfectly and then threw it almost to the baseline. Yes. It's a shame we have to start over, but we're all human, Dom, so yes. we'll just play it over. That's a referee error. We just do it over. Oh dear. Wow, <laughs> loses her footing in the middle of the point and then still has an inside out side volley out. winner ready. When it's going well, Dave, it's going well. And right now for Parento, like she almost there, fell and ends up hitting an inside out winner like you said. Catherine Parento is everything right now, except for that one, side I'll out. send her a note. That's on you, Dave, that there is. for Parento into yep. the net on the backhand, but Again, right now, Buckner needs to get a couple in a row, right? You can't let this get too far away zero, from zero. you. Okay, get a lead, have a little confidence right. from the scoreboard here. Oh, and pulling a drop Boy. volley backhand out of the Colin Schick department there. That was gorgeous from Buckner. We saw that from Schick, who made that astonishing One, run zero. in men's singles last week, using that front part of the court so effectively. Great ball from Buckner. And there's, there's the couple you were looking for. So mm -hmm. two nothing start here for Buckner. Two, zero. And tattooed the two handed backhand there. Had Parento leaning a little bit to the right and looky here. It is Parento calling timeout. So great job by Buckner taking advantage of the opportunity here and making Parento call timeout. So good start in game two for Buckner. Welcome back everybody to the Onyx Austin Showdown powered by Invited. We are at this Receiver, fantastic one facility, one of the server, invited clubs all over this great country. Invited Five. will host the national Three, championships zero. at Brookhaven Country Club in Dallas. So thrilled about that. Point. Well, Buckner continues out of the timeout to add to her lead. This Four, is exactly zero. what she needs to do. She needs to keep the pedal to the metal here. Goes with the drop shot Point. backhand carve again, and that has been very effective. And look at Buckner up five nothing. 
So many renovations Five are going to be going into Brookhaven, too, to get that thing ready in November for the national championships. It's going to be fantastic. Six nothing. You want to talk about renovations. <laughs> Buckner's getting the ball on the ground now. Right, and that's exactly what we talked about, right? The difference of her, she's got to slow the pace down. She's hitting drops now instead of drives, and she's causing issues for Parento. Side out. Okay, so hottest player in the game is being pushed down six. Zero, six. You hear the wind whistling in the microphones on court. First point of the second game for Catherine. One, six. What a return off of a serve to land it on the baseline. Yeah, and it, it, it does look like, Dave, that the wind is picking up inside of center court here, and it's six, causing a one. little bit of an issue for both of these ladies. That stays in. Side out. So swirling wind. It is one six just to get all set with the scoreboard here. One six. Look at that ball die and then just sit up for Parento right there. As Parento Point. comes forward first, and that aggressiveness pays off. Yeah, now Parento trying to find her groove here and get Two, back in this. Six. Ran through that one and pushes it deep. So after being down six nothing, gets a couple. Here's Buckner. Buckner. Needs to just continue Six, to add two. one each time, if possible, to pull an upset of this game and force a third. And she gets exactly that. Same shot was missed two times in a row. Yeah, and it seems like that wind is at uh, Parento's back yep. right now. And so she's just getting a little too much on them, sailing these balls a little Seven, long. Two. And then on the flip side right there, it looks like Buckner gets everything on that ball and just doesn't go anywhere on the little two-hander. Yeah, even Two, the hitting seven. plane got a little lower than she thought there as well with the wind. Great scamper from Buckner, but Parento was ready. That was a good forehand from Buckner on the full sprint here. But Parento is great anticipation right there, and that's a key in singles is that anticipation. Side out. Again, just deep coming forward in the midcourt on that forehand roll. So 7-3 Buckner. Seven, Quarterfinals three. winner gets the winner of Tarashenko and Elise Jones in the semis. Ooh, just pushed Side wide. Out. Big opportunity there to get to eight. Three, seven. Great pressure from Parento there, and I believe Come Buckner said timeout right there, and that is exactly seven, what we heard. So after being up six zip, Buckner's lead is cut in half. It is now seven, four. Parento on the comeback trail. Can't she get all the way there? We'll see right after this. One time out remaining. Sir, Back everybody. Out the second seed, Catherine Parento, Five. is on the comeback Four. trail Seven. here in Austin. Down just three now after being down six. And what a shot out of the timeout for Buckner. Side Much out. needed right there out of the timeout to slow the momentum of Parento down. Seven, she goes forehand four. winner down the line and gets that quick side out. Side and out. a 
again, that ball right back behind. That's a tough ball over the higher part of the net, Dom. Yeah, and the thing that the problem, not the problem, Four, but seven. Buckner guessed where Parento was going to go with that ball. Guessed completely wrong. And again, Point. back door winners for Parento. She's letting Buckner take a step and then just happily taking the open court. Such smart singles. Five, seven. Five, seven. Oh my, and that short return, but the wind is going to pull it back towards Buckner, so you need to get there even quicker if you're Parento. Seems like a big moment for Buckner seven to get five. at least one here at 7-5. And that is on the line from Parento. That's, what a shot. That's just painted down the line right there. And again, now Parento has found her rhythm again, Five, and she's seven. right back in this. Inside out Point. forehand, and Buckner tries to cut that back cross court, can't find the court. The lead is but one. Six, seven. Point. A big serve again from Parento, and the sevens are lucky in seven, Vegas seven, and not so minute. lucky for Buckner right here. And she uses her second time out here to try and stop this. But Catherine Parento has come all the way back from a 6 nothing hole. Welcome back, everybody. That woman right there, Catherine Parento, is on fire again, has come all the way back, looking to take the lead at seven all here in game two, already has game one in her pocket. Just deep on that ball. So Buckner's used the timeouts twice and they have been effective. What an unbelievable two in at backhand roll volley. And again, guess what? Back to where Buckner was just standing. She can seven, save a lot of seven. steps by just staying where she was because the ball keeps going back there. That's again, that's the, the recipe for success for Buckner is those drops. Again, she got sucked in a little bit to playing uh, Parento's seven, seven. like kind of speed up game. She's got to get back into her game and what got her that lead early in this second game. Ooh, had a good look at a ball there to maybe come in and take the net, but uh, can't find the court. So another chance for Parento seven, to take the lead. Seven. That is a tremendous Point. smart punch volley right there from Parento. Yeah, and she covers so much ground so well up at the kitchen line. And again, not very tall. It wouldn't be one of the tallest ladies on tour, but her anticipation Eight, is seven. head over heels. What oh. a ball from Brooke. Buckner as it looked like the Catherine Parento train was going to pull into another stop on this comeback. That is ridiculous. Great Seven, look from eight. our crew right there. Chance to tie it back up. And Parento wins the first elongated baseline rally had the two handers going back and forth there buckner pushes one through Eight, the wind seven. and deep and is up to the task again beautiful two-handed backhand pass down the line and again a good decision right there from buckner she had parental leaning middle and she goes backside on her to her seven, forehand eight. side actually but she had Parento moving to the middle. Oh. 
just deep from Buckner. That's, I saw it in. I saw it in. Oh, we have an overrule by our referee there. So. No, you don't, not on this one. So that will be Brooke Buckner's point. Eight, eight. Anita Johnson Flores overturns that. Just wide there. So sometimes that's tough when there's an overrule. Parento gets the ball back. So 8-8 eight, eight, down the wire here in game eight, number eight. two. And again, it's it's not, it wouldn't be my choice right there. I'd like to see her roll the forehand cross court um, and drop that in Nine, and then kind of come in after that, after she gets Parento to bounce that. Same ball from Five. Parento that's been caught in the, not that we have a jet stream, but the wind mm -hmm. heading in that direction of the court. So Buckner. Trying to nine. hang in there. Eight, nine, game two. So Gorgeous. good, Dave. Five. How many times has she done that this game? It's, uh, she's just carving that like through butter. It's absolutely beautiful. Yeah, that's a nice ball from Parento. And what do you do when you're down low? You got to bend. Leg day is important, nine, Dom. Nine. You got to have them. Don't skip nine, it. Nine, nine. And a oh. vicious two-hander from Brooke Buckner. And she has withstood the comeback from Catherine Parento and will be staring at a game point for herself on the other side of this Parento timeout. So, Dom, what do you do when you've had the lead, you see it come back, and then you get to 10-9, and now you see the other side call timeout. What's going through Brooke's mind right here? I absolutely love it. I, I love the mentality. She could have easily folded, easily. A lesser player would have, not Brooke Buckner. She battled back. She understood that Parento is going to come back, make a run. She withstood the run, and now she's given herself a game point to try and force a third game here. The mentality is just another level right here from Buckner. Yeah, and here's some highlights in that uh, the carved backhands have been absolutely fantastic from Buckner. We've also had the wind be a factor here. Parento's been coming forward. The shot you just saw was coming out of a timeout for Buckner. So I love the mental fortitude. I love shots like that one from her that we've seen. And, you know, this has been a high quality match where it's taken winners to win rallies. This is what I want right here from Buckner. I want her, I want to drop here. If I'm in her corner, I'm sitting there on the bench right now and I'm coaching her up. I'm telling her right now, Receiver, good heavy no serve, force a, a no weaker return. Rainy. And this is Time a in. drop third to Ten, a corner. Nine. All right. Here we go. The play has been called from Catalano. And how about just a missed return? And we will play three. So what a job by Buckner of hanging in there when Parento is coming, comes all the way back, gets in front, but doesn't get to 11. It's Buckner that gets to 11. Game three coming up right after this. This is the month of March and the madness has started on the hardwoods. Game three. Upsets game. already zero, in zero. NCAA college basketball and Brooke Buckner would love to pull one of her own right here. Oh. And why not start with that ridiculous Tui? That's beautiful start there from Buckner. And again, the control. She doesn't overhit it. Zero, she gets zero. some shape on it, finds the sideline. Big side out to start. Oh, same corner, Side just out. deep from Buckner. And again, Buckner's got the wind at her back now, asking about that call, but uh, call will stand, no replay zero, in this zero. match. Just wide from Buckner there. So Parento gets the first point at game three. We will switch sides at six, and with the wind, 
a factor here. Sometimes switching sides, not a big deal. It is here today. Phenomenal court coverage from Buckner, but one last answer from Catherine. Yeah, and you watch Parento put that ball away, and it's placement over power, like you say all the time, Dave. It's not about how hard you hit it, it's about how effective you can hit that ball, and she just puts Two, that zero. overhead where Buckner had vacated. That is a tremendous return off of a great serve from Parento. So, Buckner withstood a furious rally in game zero, two, zero. now needs to rally a bit herself, just down a couple. What a phenomenal read coming in off that forehand. The swinging. She made it look like so smooth right there, but it, again, this is such a hard shot. This ball right here. One, two. To control that and not hit that out. And goes for the big serve herself, and we are knotted at two, so nice early response from Buckner here. And the Wolverine has tied up the Spartan. Two, two. Just pushed wide there. Buckner having a little conversation with Buckner about that one. Two, two. Side out. But gets it right back, so. It's that wind again, and yeah. they're trying to make adjustments here. It wasn't as bad in game one, but game two, it started to pick up even more. Did she dot that sideline with that ball or pair? I don't think so. I mean, it was very close yeah. on the call, but I believe just the way Parento reacted, that ball was called wide. So we're tied at two. Two, two. This is a quarterfinal. Winner gets the winner of Tarashenko and Elise Jones. Oh, and... Buckner has missed three or four balls by maybe an inch here in game number three. Love the setup, though. She hits that drop right there. Three, two. She sh needs to take something and come in and take those balls out of the air on a good drop. That time it's Parenta that comes forward and makes a good volley, and now she's at it a couple, so... Back and forth we go, two at a time. Four, two. Yeah! Wow, Catherine Parento with a ridiculous angle on a high one-handed backhand. That's terrific. Going to the well one too many times to that backhand of Parento, and she just reads it so well and drops that cross court. No chance for Buckner. So Buckner will take a timeout. Catherine Parento trying to move on up three in game number three. Welcome back to the Onyx Austin Showdown powered by Invited. Catherine Parento up three in game three, looking to move on to the semifinals, but Book Buckner has an answer to that and just pushes the return deep. Is Point, we is may it? have an overturn here. I don't know what I saw. Oh, the hand signal I saw there, we do it? have an overturn. That's so that is a second overturn. That one is done Two, by James five. Otto. Okay. Could be a big moment here for Buckner. And it is, oh, what a pass. She capitalizes on it, Dave, and again, it's opportunities like that and taking advantage, and she does right there. So can Parento throw that away and not get that in her head? What a Three, shot from five. Buckner. Just couldn't get the feet quite Side set because of the wind moving the ball into her body. Parenta with another chance to win this rally and switch Five, sides three. up 
think that ball Sorry. was going to be wide no matter what, and the yeah. tape gave it a chance. Three, five. Tough side to lob from there for Parento. So nice job by Buckner coming forward, and she's within one. Four, five. And that's a good first volley. And you hear an alle, alle from Catherine Parento. I love a little French out there. Let's go. From Montreal Five, is four. Catherine Parento. Another chance to win a point and switch sides for Parento. And that was really close to the sideline there. I'm going to just stop there. We do have a call that's in. So Parento does indeed get that six point right there on the sideline. So 6-4 Parento, we're going to switch sides here. And there you see one of the biggest fans in pickleball. There's Kathy Dimitri just out there dancing it up. It's always fun at the PPA tour and yeah, Kathy, it's uh, even more fun. We love the fans from coast to coast. Kathy from the great city of Pittsburgh and Pickleball Central Dom. The world's best selection of all your gear curated by experts. You got to get your stuff. You got to go to Pickleball Central, Dom. Get in the booth. They're here all weekend long. If you need anything, they have everything that you could want as far as pickleball goes. Those guys and, and gals in that tent are absolutely phenomenal. We've known them for years, Dave. We love everything they are about. Unbelievable company, and they support pickleball everywhere we go around the country. They do. So if you're coming out to the event, go to their tent. And if you're watching, we thank, can't thank you enough for watching. And go to pickleballcentral.com. If you need a new paddle, call them. They got the experts. They are the experts. They curate. Come on. They're curating paddles to make sure you get the best one. They got a 30-day paddle guarantee. And there's the, speaking of paddles, pumping a paddle there is Parento. Re-engaged and now up three. Seven, four. And again, that backside winner, we've Point. seen it since the jump in this match. Yeah, she's got a bounce to her step now. And again, Eight, she's four. found that same spot on Buckner, like you said, Dave, a few times. Point. And now time it is a storm is brewing, nine, and that's four, a good time out from Buckner. Don't take them home. You don't get to collect these. No refunds. No, there's no refunds. There's no exchanges here, no. just to be crystal clear, everybody. So called timeout down 2-5. Now Buckner calls timeout at 9-4 down. And interesting thing about Parento is uh, she's really dialing in her own, uh, her own decisions over there. And she's uh, a great teacher of the game, as are you. And let's see what Top Court has to teach us right here. Love the top court videos. Love Callie Smith teaching us. Callie was back in the singles, made a little run, and then uh, got uh, beat by Anna Lee Waters, 11-1, 11-2. So uh, Anna Lee dialed in here in Austin. And again, Buckner's timeouts, that's three in a row where she's gotten a stop. So uh, used them well. Now she's got to go, though. That's a tremendous volley there from Parento. I mean, full extension, Dave, and then she just carves this out on the forehand side here. And it's just good, good, good control, good body control, and able to do something with that. Side out. Buckner does have to answer here. When she gets these side outs now, Four, she nine. cannot waste the opportunity and not get any points. Four, 
has looked so good on the backhand carve drop volley. That one, not so much. No, she got that way too high. She wanted to carve it out like she has been all match, but just gets it a little too high. Parento able to run it down. Good response again from Buckner. So has gotten some stops in a row here, but it's what does she do with the ball in her hand right here? Four, Big serve nine. could help her out. Parento fends off the multitude of groundies from Buckner. Yeah, and she's got to change the pace again. It's like a, a, a baseball Nine, player, four. fastball hitter, just sitting fastball, and that's all Parento's doing right now is sitting on the hard stuff. Unbelievable effort from Buckner, but you could see the ball moving left to right in the wind and at Parento's back, and we are at match point for Parento. Oh, and that catches the net in a very game effort from Brooke Buckner, but Catherine Parento is moving on to the semifinals. Michigan State takes out Michigan. Go green, go white. Nice job by Catherine Parento. Really pushed in game two. Yeah, she and was. Lost it. Buckner played a very strong match, just ran into one of the hottest players on tour. So, Parento will get Jones or Tarashenko, and we will have the men back on center court when we come back. Welcome back, everybody. There's a good look at the number one player in the world, Ben Johns. Just a couple days from his 24th birthday as well. That'll be on Saturday, so big day for Ben. And Ben is also one of the many players, Dom, that is here in the Austin area. So it's nice for these players to be able to wake up in their own bed and come over and play after travel is demanding. So uh, Ben Johns at home for not just a pickleball tournament, but his 24th birthday. There's a look at his opponent. And his opponent, John May Martinez Vic. And Martinez Vic coming off of two very nice wins, taking out two higher seeds. Zero, First zero. over Hartland Jones and Yates Johnson puts him in this quarterfinal matchup. Side and out. just deep there from Martinez Vic. So uh, one versus 25 here. Uh, ben Johns, of zero, course, zero. really has come to play in singles in 2023. Has lost one time, and that was to Stax Rude. Great job Side by out. Martinez Vic right there. Zero, zero. Just get that out of here. Just get it out of here. Fly swatter. <laughs> just slap that down inside out forehand. Zero, zero. Ooh. Incredible wow. coverage. I think Johns thought this point is over and got surprised. Martinez Vic, very zero, zero. impressive there. Side out. Uh, and don't sleep on Martinez Vic. He's got wins over Julian Arnold. He's got wins over Connor Garnett, Hayden Patroquin, zero, who zero. we saw earlier, Pablo Tellez. So this guy can play. And I mean, he's smooth. Just watch his movements right now. One, he's smooth. Two, he's not intimidated. Obviously, zero, he's zero. got big wins. 
And Dave, I'm going to take a, a a page out of, of your book with that Tui that he's got yes. right there, sure, and it sure. is absolutely beautiful. Goes a little long on that one, but again, it's nice. Ben leaves it up, and Side Martinez out. Vic is there. I don't know why he's why apologizing. Why do you apologize yeah. for that? Yeah. <laughs> Keep hitting winners. He's, he apo he triple apologized. <laughs> like, sure, sure. Okay. That can, you don't need to give him a birthday gift two days early. It's all good. Side a out. great lead from the veteran Ben Johns. And again, we talk about it. We were talking a couple days ago, Dave, about the veteran Ben Johns at the ripe yeah, yeah. age of almost 24. Yes. Yeah, 23 and 363, and that is a Point. beautiful strike off of that Yola Perseus paddle. He likes that. He likes the sweet spot on it. It has really Whoa, improved zero. his singles game, especially the two-handed backhand. Oh, and look at that little dropper over after the Ben Johns patented inside out run around drop forehand, but Martinez Vic right there. Zero one. And that stays one. in, so we are tied at one. Yeah, Johns thought that ball was gonna be well long. He let it go. He could have played it, but he thought it was gonna be well one, long, one. but it just dropped like a lead balloon back there on the baseline. quickness but can't get there I mean Martinez Vic as I mentioned has beaten a lot of players including Gabe Joseph in uh, Arizona earlier this year and Gabe Joseph having quite a day with that win over McGuffin earlier today and look at that ridiculous court coverage and punches the volley on the move hard to do yeah it's tough you know you get a, he's got the full game and the full package we haven't seen much of him but we're one, seeing one. it early on in this first game against ben johns just rifling winners martinez vic up two to one and that is a gorgeous two-handed backhand tucked neatly in the corner pocket back there two one Uh-oh. That just misses the baseline <laughs> back there on court number four. <laughs> yeah, that thing is long gone. That's on Wakeland Avenue back there. And uh, that'll happen on a, on a good return and maybe a little kiss off that center line, not the baseline, mm -hmm. but. Uh, One, two. We got plenty of Duras, we're fine. Again, we saw that very effective in the women's match of going back where your opponent was, and Johns does it again right there. 2-2 Two -two early here. This is quarterfinal Two -two. men's singles. Just cool, calm, and collected is Ben Johns. With everything he does, he goes inside out drop, then goes forehand flat down the line, Three, and then two. goes two-hander flat down the opposite sideline. Yeah, and that was the, the day that his singles game right elevated, being able to have that weapon on the two-handed backhand side as a pass. Winner of this one gets the winner two, of three. De Villiers and Alshon, which is on an auxiliary court, so that is a great battle going on. And look at Martinez Vic. Wow. The Does, he athleticism. Look Does he look scared? Not one bit. Not he is not bit. intimidated. And again, it's it's the old adage of who's your opponent? Nameless and faceless. It doesn't matter who's on the other side of the net. You're playing against whoever it is. Three, three. Throw out the number one player. Okay, that's who I'm playing. Let's go. Oh, and had Johns lean in the wrong way, and what a patient approach to that rally for Martinez Vic. And it is Ben Johns who has his hands on his hips right now. But who was in control that whole point, Dave? 
It was Ben Johns. Yes. And all of a sudden, Martinez Vic comes in, closes ground, and hits that two-hander for the winner down the line. And it was an opponent's home run, so they threw it back onto the field there. So we're going to collect the ball that came from Wrigley. the out of court. Exactly. Four, three. I guess Ben is from Austin, so uh, we, we'll, we'll allow that here. But <laughs> crowd just wants great pickleball, and they are seeing it here from John May. What a great start Three, for him. Four. Wind is at his Point. back there, so that's not going to stay in. Dom, you ran out on the court. What's the wind situation out there? It's kind of swirling a little bit. Um, when we were out there earlier, it was kind of cross um, from the bottom side of your screen to the top from left to right. And it's very similar right now. And that is a wicked forehand from that man. Ben Johns ties us, excuse me, extends his lead to 5-4. Seen that exact, exact shot on the run and he gets so much on it. Yeah, and that's the key right there is he has to get something on this or else Johns is going to track it down and put another paddle Four, on five. it. And the footwork of Martinez Vic forces an error from Johns. This kid's an athlete. I mean, the balls that he is getting with his two-hander to try and drop in, some of them are behind him. And uh, Martinez Vic threw his hands up after he hit that way too high and just carved for a winner from Ben Johns. And Ben Johns ran out of real estate over there on the sideline from that angle. He was actually there, but just too tight to the advertising there and had to had to stop. So nice angle from Martinez Vic. And an over hit ball again from Ben Johns and Tremendous, you can hear the grunting effort from Martinez Vic. It's, it's to Ben Johns' point, it's, it's annoying for him right now that he's getting, that Martinez Vic is getting all these balls back. So he overhits that last one. And it's because he's getting all these back, it just gets frustrating that he can't put them away. He gets Johns reaching and a frustrated ball return from Ben there. And it is seven. Five. Seven, five. Side out. Had a look at that, couldn't shape it into the court. So, number one seed down two here in the five, quarters. Seven. Just Boy. wide from Martinez Vic there as he is staring down Ben Johns in these cat and mouse games and hanging right there. Six, yeah, he's seven. in every one of these points. He's not outmatched. It's just execution right now. That'll stay in because it's into the wind. Great patience from Martinez Vic. Let Johns declare which side he wanted to cover. Effort that he is investing here is significant. I like that he sort of took his time here before he serves this next ball. Seven, six. Ooh, I loved it. I love the idea. If that ball is there, if Johns gets to it, I don't know how much he's going to be able to do with it. Yeah, and it was there for the, t and he held it 
he was looking down the line. I ever we loved everything about it except the execution, and, unfortunately. And those are moments and matches against the number one player in the world that you have to execute. Yep. Oh, might have played an out ball there, and Point. not only did he maybe play an out ball, but he played himself off the court as well, and we're tied at seven. And it goes from 8-6, his lead and his serve, to 7-7. Seven, seven. And so those are difference makers in matches like this against the number one seed. 7-7. Seven, seven. And he's shaking his head like, don't, don't, don't bring that over here. How many, how many running full swing forehand volleys do I have to hit? No, 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 no. Little, little, seven, little seven. flair in this young man here. I love it. Just wide there. He's Side checking out. in with our referees on the court. Uh, Got to give appreciation to Carolyn Duncanson and Drew DeHennis, our referees for this match. They both concur with the call. Seven, seven. Side out. And Johns does not make his signature inside out forehand there. So another shot for Martinez Vic to take the lead. And a big vamos from Martinez Vic after that play, trying to force. Seven, seven. Some momentum here for himself and take a lead back on Ben Johns. Oh my goodness, what a read and what hands and then what pace on the volley, Dom. He turned around the Ben Johns forehand volley like it wasn't even there. I mean, like it was on a tee for him and he just two hands it, winner to take a one point lead here. Eight, seven. Oh, John May had a look there, but uh, over swings at that one. So 8-7, we're having a little egg hunt here under the bleachers. I think it's the third ball we've been yeah. through here in this first game. Seven, Seven serving eight. eight here. Ben can't come up with that one. So this is a chance to put that scoreboard pressure on there as well for Martinez Vic. Eight, seven. And John says not so fast. He wasn't able to, that being Martinez Vic, not able to get enough on that two-hander right there and pops it up. And John's just swats it down with his backhand. Seven, eight. Wow. Point. Smoked two handed backhand from Ben Johns. Hello, Perseus. Ball is ripped on the line. And I mean, that is just eight, picture eight. perfect form for a two hander by Ben Johns. Now he drops one and Martinez Vic can't shape it into the court. We will not have a timeout. So Johns is now nine, edged eight. in front at 9 8. Little Point. telegraph on the drop shot, and Ben Johns was there easily, and then a little too much. So Martinez Vic waits one more point, does call timeout here, but when we come back, he will be staring at a game point down. What a great first game here in this quarterfinal. Martinez Vic giving the top seed everything he can handle and more. Alert again in the men's singles bracket as Christian Alshon has beaten Jay DeVillier and will move on. What a day Alshon has had beating Hunter Johnson, beating the red hot Colin Schick and now DeVillier. Oh my, that ball's out, but 
We've seen that winner all day long from Martinez. Vic, he's like, I'm good. I wagged my finger about this earlier. Yeah, he wasn't taking any chances of letting that ball drop, and he keeps it in by five, six feet. So saves a game point. And what a nice combo. A little lob serve and then inside out. Beautifully done there by Martinez Vic. Nine, ten. And again, he is not going anywhere. Oh, and just doesn't stay Side committed out. to the forehand. Hits himself in the head with the paddle off screen there. Second chance for Ben. Had a game point at 10 8. Didn't go his way. Ten, now one nine. at 10 9. And just. Blisters, a serve. Where is John Isner right now? What a cannon from Ben Johns. And that huge serve takes game number one. Martinez, Vic, though, put on quite a show. We look forward to game number two. It's the top seed with game number one. We'll be right back. Welcome back, Dom. We had a three set or three game thriller with Connor Garnett and tell me more about that. Yeah, Connor Garnett comes out on top of Brandon Lane in three, 11-1-11-9 in games two and three after he dropped the first one, 10-12. What a great job by Connor Garnett to put himself in the quarters against Gabriel Joseph. Who himself had a huge win over Tyson McGuffin in his last match. So a lot of, a lot of three game thrillers. It is March Madness, come on. It is. Point. Just deep for Martinez, Vic, and this is a dangerous little spot here. We talked about it in some prior matches. Two, you want to get your footing quickly if you drop game one. And there's the Ben Johns. If you Point. hit a short return, he is coming and he is on the prowl. Just pure execution from the last serve of game number one right now into the beginning of game number two, up 3-0, now make it four, and he's just cruising along here, Dave. Yeah, now he is blasting away with the wind at his back, so that's how good that serve was before. That was in wind in his face. And this needs to be a timeout. It has to be a timeout, but he is Going to go play on at 5-0 down. It looked like he was heading to the bench, but not so. 5-0. And Ben Johns <laughs> making it look so cash right there. 6-0. Ben Johns just hanging out on a... Thursday afternoon in his hometown. Six, zero. Oh, oh Johns chose to go body there. He was going body the second time Double too, body. right? He just went into the to off the top of the tape, but he was trying to zero, go six. right at Martinez Vic. That's pulled right wide by the wind, so uh, a very focused Ben Johns here in game two gets the ball Six, right zero. back. Point. Oh, and, uh, Seven, zero. A frustrated soccer kick from Martinez Vic there, missed the return, and after putting on a beautiful show in game number one, he is staring at a seven nothing deficit we all want to learn and get better Dom let's see what top court has for us we'll go to that right now well thanks instructors Pat Smith and Jesse Irvin folks don't try to speed it up off your shoe tops especially if you're a newer player some of these pros will do that and it'll work but uh, that's why they're pros that's why they're pros and that is why they're pros right there what do you tell somebody to do? Return the ball down the middle so there are no angles, mm -hmm. Dom. Right. It, it's exactly what you're taught to do. He does it's such a good job, does Martinez Vic, but then Ben John just rolls Eight it off two. his shoe tops. Gets a little love off the tape, too. Eight nothing. Oh. 
Nice drop shot there from Martinez Vic and you see the never give up from Ben Johns but perfect combo there from Martinez Vic but the deficit is now eight. And that was a tough ball for Off Martinez Vic because it clipped the tape. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's such a good forehand. And we saw a ton of that in the first game. We just haven't seen it here in game number two because Ben Johns is putting on so much pressure, but a nice forehand winner there from Martinez Vic. Yeah, inside in, beautiful. Now it goes inside Why? out, and I think that cost the line as well. So two forehand winners in a row. That's why you have an eight point Two, lead going eight. into that right now. And Ben's Sorry, like, get that out of here. Just swats that back. So eight two now for Ben Johns. Again, looking to eight, move on two. to the semifinals where he will face if he wins Christian Alshon. Point. Two. Just deep on that Side serve. Out. So saw a couple of beautiful forehands from Martinez. Vic, last time he had the ball, he's got to have at Two, least nine. a couple more here. Point. Or he'll take all the gifts, even though the birthday boy on the other side in two days. Doesn't mean there's gifts available no. on Thursday and Friday <laughs> no. for nine. others. Come on. Uh, just <laughs> such, I mean, you're laughing because of just the, the point construction yes. from Ben Johns right there. Is he carves this backhand cross court, gets Martinez Vic off court, basically, and just puts away the forehand. Yeah, and just Not twirls around three. and heads back to serve. Another missed serve right there out. from Johns. Wind is at his back now. Three, nine. <laughs> Right out. Just deep for Martinez Vic there. So again, when you're in this type of a hole, got to make everything. Yeah, you have Nine, to. Can't three. afford to be giving Ben John side outs and opportunities to finish this. <laughs> I just, again, so easy, nonchalant. Looks like he's going to roll this back cross court, but goes flat down the line. Ten, three. And here we are at match point for Ben Johns. Perfect read, but we have a Side foot out. fault call, so hold <laughs> those tickets, folks. Drew DeHennis all over three, that ten. call. Oh, and then Side Martinez Vic misses the serve on the other side. So second match point for Ben Johns. 10-3. What a short hop volley there for Ben Johns and he is moving on to the semifinals. Martinez Vic was impressive in game one. Right there, just couldn't quite get those final couple points. And then Ben Johns dominant in game two. So we will have Johns and Alshon in the semis in our next match here. We've just been going, it's equal time always on the PPA Tour. We go men, we go women. Well, we got two ladies coming next. Anna Lee Waters and Salome Davidze. That's going to be a beauty. So we'll have that next. Ben Johns moving on to the semifinals. We'll be right back. So I, I do have a Davidze sighting. So she's ready to play ball now, which is great. Dom, who's in the other half? We had a little bit of an upset there from one of uh, the crowd favorites in doubles, but she's starting to make a difference in singles, Elise Jones. Scrappy Elise Jones, love watching her play. Everything gets back over the net. She's gonna dive, sacrifice her body to, to stay in points. 
she beats Irina Tereshenko 11-9, 11-9. So those games were tight. She found a way to come out on top. And hey, congratulations, moving on to the semis. You get Catherine Parento. So it's just, she's got a, she's got a battle, but we'll have that matchup probably in another couple after we get a men's match after this one, I assume. But as you guys can see right there, there's our bracket and how we got to the semis. Yeah, so we had all chalk to the semis except for the Jones upset over Tarashenko. Men's side a little bit different. We have Ben Johns playing Christian Alshon. So we have that going on. And then we don't even have the other semifinal set. We have Staxrude who is back to his wrecking everybody ways. <laughs> Wyatt Stone had a good run today. Don't want to underscore that, but uh, Staxroot came to play in that match and only dropped a couple points. And then Staxroot will get the winner of two of the more athletic players you will ever see in Connor Garnett and Gabe Joseph. Gabe Joseph knocking out Tyson McGuffin. Hadn't played singles in a while. McGuffin right. did not enter last week. That paid off for him as he made a march to the silver medal with Parento. So that's who's left. That's the thing, too, is with Gabe Joseph. He's always been a guy that is he, on the single side of things. He is a, for me, uh, how I compare it, he on the single side, what I would compare to a double side of DJ Young. When they are hot, Good luck beating them, yep. right? A a anybody, okay? When DJ Young is playing, Dave, we call them, this had to be four years ago, Newport Beach, you and I can go back to that one. We call that match. If that DJ Young shows up every day, he's one of the top two, three guys in the game. And so it all depends on which DJ Young. Gabriel Joseph, it's the same thing. There are flashes where he has, where it's like, you will not touch him on a singles court. And so it's about putting that together for him. And right now it seems like it's going his way. So it's gonna be interesting to see that matchup between Connor Garnett and Gabe Joseph. So enough talk about those guys. Let's get back to the ladies here. So Anna Lee Waters, Salome Davidze now ready to go. The winner is done. They're done for the day. They're playing on Sunday. The loser will play for bronze against the loser of the Catherine Parento Elise Jones match. So it is going to be Salome Davidze on the top of your screen to serve. Let's play pickleball or not. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it again. We didn't get to play. So Anna Lee Waters. No, I'm not going to do it again. Here we go. Let's get this going. Uh, that didn't get us going either. So, all right. All right. Let's, all right, let's start over. We, start it took it over us a, a second to get this match started. All right. No, you serve. There we go. Nice by David Zay. Side out. And again, it's going to be interesting. You talked about David Zay's willingness to come forward. Tougher to do against Annalie Waters, zero, but zero. necessary. Nice two-handed flick from Davidze there. So Davidze recently, over the last month and a half, had a paddle change. She is now using the legacy paddle. A little more jumpy off that for her, and she's still finding her way with it. Point. Good swing there for Davidze, putting One, a lot zero. of pressure on the depth of the court. Gets the first point of this match. Oh, wow. And there's everything that Anna Lee Waters has, the movement, and then just a beautiful backhand roll. Davidze came forward and hit a good volley. Zero, just one. not good enough. <laughs> oh, Anna Lee goes tweener on that lob from Davidze, but really couldn't do much with it. It was an easy volley there for Davidze, but. And what a lob and what a smart choice. She is into the wind. So if you can throw that all the way back there, the wind will hold it up. And Annalie Water says, you can keep coming forward. I got you. Take a look at this craziness from AL. 
just wide for Davidze. So one apiece again. Semi final action. One, one. Side up. Nice ball down the line there from Davidze. Catches the line. Might have caught both lines, the sideline and the baseline there. Perfect. One, one. Heavy Point. ball on the backhand there from Davidze. She gets Annalie Waters on full sprint to the sideline. And Davidze oh. wins in exchange with Anna Lee Waters. And isn't she looking great to start this match? She really is. Good control, winning hands battles up at the kitchen line. The way she moves her feet so well. Side out. And Anna Lee does something better than I think anybody in the game is hitting a ball on the run cross body, right? So she's full sprint to her left, she hits a two-hander, and then she hits it all the way cross court. And a beautiful ball there from Annalie Waters and the first fist pump from the 16-year-old top player in the game. Yeah, got a little bit on her heels right there trying to drop that ball in. She's on her toes, that ball's gonna be finished and that will go over, but just got caught a little bit on her heels. Good pressure though from Davidze to put her there. I like the aggressive approach that Davide has taken in this match. I mean, she's coming forward. You know, when you're playing Annalie Waters, you're going to get passed. But that's that's part of the that's part of the routine here. But put the yep. pressure on and don't be dictated too. Good start here for Davide. Just a little wide there, and and I do stand corrected. Davide is back to the Yola uh, right now. I just kind of noticed that that she is back to that Yola. Ooh, that just, just missed there. as well. So by maybe a half an inch on both sides of the court there is Davide and you know, that's the how fine Annalie Waters makes you play when you are up against her. And we saw this approach the last time these two ladies played. Annalie Waters challenging that forward movement of Davide, dropping that ball making her move up into the court, and that's just Five, two beautiful three. balls. Little finesse from AL. Mm -hmm. Oh my wow. goodness, the athleticism from Annalie Waters right there. She spun like a top, uncoils, right back at it. And she's absolutely out of the point because she brought her forward on a ball way too high and still, my goodness, okay. Oh my, there's the running two-handed beauty back against the grain and all Davidze could do is watch. She's like, oh, I'm in good position, oh no. Look at that, look at how athletic that is to hit that ball like that. You gotta run with the paddle in position. She does it perfectly. So good start for Davide, but Waters on a rampage. Welcome back everybody. Good look at Annalie Waters there. Dave Fleming with Dom Catalano. And Annalie Waters has been putting on a running two-handed backhand passing clinic here. Time in, 7-3. Side out. You feel
feel so smart when you call timeout and the other player misses a serve. Like, I am smart. Look at me. I call great timeouts. Yep. <laughs> yep. Three, seven. Oh, a little cut serve. And the Martinez Vic shot that we saw a bunch against Ben Johns on the run. Anna Lee Waters, just perfect. Seven, three. Tried to guide it up the line there. Yeah, and that's, it, you You call it perfectly, Dave, right? Aim. She aimed it instead of hit it, right? Like, Three, use your athleticism, hit it there, don't aim it there. Okay. Side out. Another wicked slicing spin there, but Annalie Waters unfazed. Yeah, and her spin hurt her, hurt her third, right? Yes. She ate her own spin up, Seven, right? Three. Great ball off the bounce from Davidze. You have to be patient with that. She let it get to the apex and then just roped a two-hander. So three, Davidze seven. has not scored in quite a while, been stuck at three. Point. That's a great baseline rally from Davidze there and used the win, brought that ball back in. It was blowing diagonally across the court from your left to the far right towards that red three lines on the Four, scoreboard. Point. And a nice deep approach again. So Davidze within two. Yeah, and again, you're seeing Davidze and Waters get into this baseline to baseline rally, and I think Waters Five, needs to get seven. out of that. She needs to put pressure on Davidze. When she does, she's in control. And right Side there, that. right? So she returns, comes up, and forces Davidze to hit a perfect shot because Annalie Waters covers the court so well, you're not gonna get it away from her unless you go six inches sideline to sideline. And that is just too good. Catches it on the rise and rips it past Davidze. 8-5 Waters. Find me someone who hits a ball across their body as well as Anna Lee Waters. Both sides, they forehand be, and backhand. They could be looking for several years. Couldn't quite get back to that one. Good pressure there from Davidze. So 5-8, trying to chip away here. 5-8. Point. And gets a missed return. Dom, the other thing we're seeing are the shadows coming into the court here. That could be a factor. Six, Yeah, and you talk about it, Dave, those shadows, they can be an issue, right? Players don't like playing with those shadows. Ball goes in and out of it. And especially here, look, it's like shadow on half of court and Timeout, on Annalise half of the court. And then in her kitchen, it's not. So ball traveling through that, um, you know, can cause issues. So we have an Annalie Waters timeout on offense here. Good call to just find the play that she wants to do. There's the Yola paddle of Salome Davidze, which paddle is going to help propel their human into the final. We'll be right back. Back, everybody. Thrilled to have you along with us on a Thursday Hi, afternoon. Hey, and we never dreamed that shadows were going to be a problem on the court today after the rain delay this morning. But now there they are. And there she is again. This time talked about her pulling it across her body. Now she goes down the line. Well, now that's just an issue now for Davidze because now it's like, okay, she's going cross court beautifully. Now she goes flat down the line. Now you're going to start guessing. Just catches the tape there. So, Annalie gets one out of the offensive timeout. And Davidze now doing that unique serving position that she takes. Wow, 
Emily Waters so off balance there was able to throw it into the kitchen and gets a mistake from Davide. She's almost in a full split getting that last ball and just flipping it up to keep it in play. Oh, and that's just pushed wide from Davidze again. Annalie Waters making her hit one more ball, and that ball goes wide. Ten six. And we have a game point here for the top seed. Too good from Davidze there. It's a beautiful rolling forehand. Yeah, good cross court spot. He she caught Annalie Waters coming into the middle and goes opposite. Beautifully done by Davidze, but she's got some work to do here in game one. Just corner to corner to corner. Davidze covering every inch of that black and gray court. And a second chance for Anna Lee Waters to close out game number one in semifinal number one. Side out. And a hammered forehand return that Waters cannot handle. And nice pressure from Davidze on the return. You know, again, not just getting it back over and in, she's putting pressure on Waters and forcing her into a mistake. Unbelievable angle from Anna Lee Waters. Just disgusting as she walks in or comes in and just rips this across her body again. And just the control she's able to put, the top spin she's able to put on her. And she bunts that into the open court. And it is Anna Lee Waters on her third chance takes game number one, 11-6, the footwork and the array of passing shots on display. Top seed, halfway home to Championship Sunday. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. It is the Onyx Austin Showdown, and big news from Onyx from pro player signing. Shelby Bates joins Team Onyx. So. Another great player to add to their stable of great women players, and uh, Shelby's a player on the rise. Yes, she is. She's playing really well right now. She's making a name for herself. She's One finding zero. that consistency in her game. Be great to see what she has coming up. What a down the line backhand from Anna Lee Waters. And this is a match that has required a winner. You gotta hit winners <laughs> on this match. <laughs> Full run, ball in your front of your body, inside out, forehand flicks it inside the line. Come on, Dom, stop it. This is an unbelievable shot from Annalie Waters. Side out. And the fact that she kept that ball in, too, is so hard. She easily could overhit that yep. and hit it about five feet wide. Yeah, I've had a little help from Mother Nature because the wind's coming from that side, so calculated that perfectly. That's a tremendous backhand volley from Davidze right there. As you watch Annalie Waters look down at the barricades at the and and just be like, if I had a little more room, I could probably get that. But it is a little tight here, and players are adapting that. We saw Ben Johns yep. adapting to it earlier. That is a blistered oh. return. Just deep, though. It's the voice of Laura Smart with Damon Barry as the second referee. And that stays in from Anna Lee Waters. Swinging two-handed volley from maybe three feet inside the baseline. Yep. Again, I think she's in. had a couple of... Three, two. 
calculating the wind perfectly because it's in her face, so she can take a bigger swing from over there. And there you see that tennis background from Davidze. That is not an easy overhead with the wind swirling around and smokes a winner. I mean, clean. There's that return down the middle, take the angle away idea, Dom. Just great pressure return there from Annalie Waters again. And you said it too, Dave, is down the middle. It creates it just Three, the two. windows of opportunity close down the middle because of the angles. Point. Davidze was there, but just couldn't hit down and through, hit just through, and that carries deep. Four, two. I see your great return and have one on Davidze. It's a quality ball ripped right inside the baseline. Two, four. Point. And that serve stays in. So Anna Lee catches one that she thought was going wide and Three, four. <laughs> looked around and was like, Yep, yeah. I just I just caught a ball that was in and moving on. Easiest point to Vize will ever win. Point. And follows it up with a very nice two-handed backhand. So four all here in game number two. Well, she does a good job right there on that two-handed backhand, keeping that ball nice and low to the net, forcing Annalie Waters to try and hit four. up on that volley. That's the way she's gonna find some success. She cannot leave balls up to Waters or she'll punish them. Oh my, and 10 feet of court available. And again, but coming forward and making Anna Lee Waters beat her, unable to do so there. So after that circus inside out forehand, Davide has rallied impressively and is now up in game two. A little long on the forehand from Davidze, and Anna Lee Waters temporarily stops the bleeding as she's still down by one here. Davidze takes the lead. That's just right two great balls in a row from Davidze. Unbelievable return, just spanked. Finding her range, and again, singles players usually want to play with the wind at their back to force the pressure, and that's where Davidze finds herself now. And applies Cut even more receiver. pressure, and Annalie Waters is going to make four. the walk. The player benches are behind Davidze's side of the court, so that's why she is walking over there if you're curious. And this is a nice response from Davidze. She's up two in game number two. Eight seconds. All right, folks, One welcome back. Salome Davidze forces a timeout call from Anna Lee Waters and is up two here in game two. Can she keep it going? Yes, she can. Nice inside out forehand there. And Davidze now up 7-4. Seven, 7-4. Four. Seven, four. There's that big Point. boom and tennis overhead. The key right there was the two-hander she yes. came in on. She pushed it to the sideline. Did not do much with it at all, but hit it to a spot Eight, where four. Annalie Waters had to hit it on full run, put away. Beautifully done by Davidze. 8-4. Trouble. Davidze turned her <laughs> yeah, back. Like, <laughs> yep. This point is over. I'm okay with that. So, a lot of work to do for Annalie Waters. Eight. Last three times she's played, Davidze has not dropped a game, but down four here. 
Down three here. Swinging jump forehand there from Waters, and now she's back. And that's just ridiculous. You've talked about the cross court, but now the down the line's working as well. Yeah, it's shaped so well. She stays on top of that, hooks that, rolls that back in. And it is a singles clinic over the last three rallies here, Dom. It was 8-4 maybe out, receiver, seven, 37 eight. seconds ago. And now it's Anna Lee back within one. So three in a row for Anna Lee Waters and Davidze is calling a timeout with the lead. So smart use of the timeout and it's smart to learn how to play at a higher level and the folks at top court can help you do just that. Here's another look at a top court. When doubles gets rolling tomorrow and Saturday, Dom, we will be seeing a lot of shaking and baking. So bring that into your game at your local courts, folks. Here we go, Annalie Waters, 7-8, oh my. And the perfect outcome after a timeout. She's gonna take Dribbler. that all day, Dave, oh, all day. For sure. And Annalie Water tried to rush that across court, and Davidze finally gets off eight and is now at nine. And I think Waters was in control for most of that point right there. Got exactly what she was nine, looking seven. for, just kind of rushed through the shot in the middle. Another ball off the tape, but this time it is Waters with the answer, and a little volume from... Uh, Anna Lee there. Oh, she sold it so well. She had her full body moving to the left and she goes to the right. Just wide on the return. David Zay's checking in. Laura Smart agrees that it was out. Beautiful volley using the front of the court to win. You know Davidze is a problem back at the baseline, and we are tied at nine. Great comeback here from Annalie Waters. Get back in the second game where it looked like Davidze was in total control. And the same miss to in it backhand down the line. You're trying to pull that down the line and get to the middle of the court. And we are at match point for the top seed. Oh, oh my <laughs> goodness, some Salome Davidze saves match point with a gorgeous forehand. She took something off that too, right? She didn't try and rip nice it too hat. hard. If she does, it stays up to Waters. She goes down the line nice and easy, put some shape on it. See if she can tie this up here. And Annalise uh -huh. smartly uses the drop volley to get the ball back. Second chance to head to Sunday for Anna Lee Waters. Oh Point no, and a match. really Point high match. level match Anna unfortunately Waters. ends with a return into the net and it is Anna Lee Waters, the top seed, heading to championship Sunday. She was not there in Daytona because she got beat by Catherine Parento. She is going to be looking for a title on Sunday. Really well played. Davidze made her work, Dom. She did. She really played well in that second game, especially did Davidze. Had a lead, just couldn't finish. Unfortunately for her, she'll drop down and play for bronze. So we'll be back. It'll be the guys on the court when we come back. Welcome back, everybody. The top seed, Anna Lee Waters is on her way to championship Sunday, but right now she's got to stop with our Hannah Johns. Let's hear what she says about her victory over Salome Davidze. Well, welcome back to Championship Court, everyone, where we have just finished our first semifinal of the day. Annalie Waters, you are on to Championship Sunday. Salome Davidze never won to take for granted. How did you feel out there? 
Yeah, for sure. Uh, obviously, last tournament I didn't get to the finals of singles, so I came out today with some fire. Uh, throughout my all three matches today, I was just trying to be really aggressive and play my game, get back to what I was doing. Uh, Salome is a great player. I've played her in uh, many semifinals, and she did great to get here, so she's a great player, and I love playing her. Well, speaking of which, I have to ask you, Catherine Parento broke your single streak of almost, I think, eight months. Your last loss was in June of last year to Paris Todd. How does it feel to come back here, and do you have a little bit more to prove here today and Sunday? Yeah, it's almost a relief, honestly. You know, holding that streak is, is stressful at times. So, you know, I'm just coming back stronger. Hopefully, maybe next time I'll get nine months. But I'm just happy to be here uh, back in the singles final, my happy place. Well, Anna Lee, you hit a tweener, which we don't see a lot of ladies do. The men will try it once in a while. Where's that tweener action coming from? Well done. Yeah, well, I train with Christian Alshon, and he's the tweener king. So I'm just trying to hit better tweeners than him. And that one was pretty good, so. I love it. Maybe we'll see a, cute, a few more on Sunday. Congratulations, Annalie. You're moving on. Don't go away, anyone. We have three more semifinals to bring you. Welcome back, everybody. Thrilled to have you with us. Dave Fleming here with coach, trainer, money ball leader. This guy just loves the sport of pickleball like I do. Thrilled to have him in the booth. And Dom, we have a very interesting matchup. we got the top seed who we see right there and Ben Johns. Rolled out of his own bed this morning. Didn't know where he was going to play because of the rain. Now it's a beautiful day. And then there's Christian Alshon right there. Christian Alshon knew he was starting the day with his hands full. And his run to this semifinal has been impressive. Share with us what he's done. Well, he started off the day with Colin Schick. Dave, you and I we were here. We wanted to watch that match right away, bright and early. Was a great match. Went three. Alshon comes out on top 11-9 in game three. Then, congratulations, you get Hunter Johnson in your second round matchup. He takes care of Johnson, nine and six. And then, hey, why not? Let's go against Jocelyn Duvillier in the quarterfinal, and he takes care of him at seven and 10. And so he's playing really well right now, but as well as he's playing, he's gonna have to play his best against the number one player in the world, Ben Johns. That's for sure. So we've got one lady into the championship Sunday singles, and that's Anna Lee Waters. As she mentioned, she was not there last time. We are, of course, at the Onyx Austin Showdown, powered by Invited. Just in Daytona, hop over here to Austin, and guess where we're going next week? We're going right back. Right back, right to, back Daytona to Daytona for MLP. So. Yeah, it's going to be great. Uh, the first MLP of the year was fantastic. This one is going to be equally as good. I know um, I've seen the level of play rise with these players on these tour stops. So um, look forward to that. So what do you think you're going to see from Alshon here? You put that resume today that he's had. Right. It's impressive. What has he got to do Pick to put ball, an even bigger aha on his day? Well, again, it's how do you beat Ben Johns? You better play clean, right? You cannot have mistakes. You cannot have unforced errors. You have to play clean first and foremost. Alshon gets streaky. Um, he has tendency to get very streaky on the offensive side of things. My question for him here is can he keep it all together and play a complete game? He needs to keep it together. If he doesn't, Ben Johns will have his way with him. If Alshon does play clean, Ben Johns will have his hands full here with Christian Alshon. So they have played four times. Ben Johns has won all four of those. The last time they played was at the Carvana Arizona Grand Slam. Alshon actually took game one of that 11-9, and then it was all Ben Johns after that. 11-3, 11-1. Game one. 11-5, 11-4, the prior Game time they zero. played. So here we go for a spot on Sunday. Let's play pickleball. And a little net cord winner for the hometown boy. It's a birthday gift, early birthday gift from the net. His 24th is on Saturday. 1-0. Wow. And that is a fun singles rally right there, Dom. I went cat and mouse to firefight in a hurry, and Ben Johns comes out on top of that again, testing the hands of Ben Johns. 
probably not the best thing that Alshon could do right now. Side out. So two out of the gate for Ben Johns. The other half of this is still a little in flux. Zero, Fed two. Federico Staxford's going to play somebody. Garnett and Gabe Joseph were on the court. Reese and Zerlet. it was Garnett 11-3 in the third, so that Zero, just two. finished up. So Connor Garnett will play Staxrud in the other semi. And that Ooh. is a Point. wicked forehand from Alshon. That is a grown-up forehand down the line there from Alshon. Had Ben John just leaning a little bit One, to the middle. Two. And sometimes, Dom, you return to the forehand because they're running around all the backhands. Right, right. and you saw Alshon right there trying to whip that cross his body like we saw Annalie Waters do a lot of. He just stood up too high, didn't stay through it. And Ben John stays through that forehand right there for a winner. Did he ever? Smokes that down the line for the third point here. 3-1. And a Point. little flick backhand roll catches Alshon leaning, and it is 4-1 Ben Johns. One more Four possibly one. timeout here for Alshon. You cannot let Ben Johns get hot like he is right now. Ooh, Ooh Johns was there and tried a big time flick, but the backhand cut from that man, Christian Alshon, gets the ball back, so. See what he can do with it here. He's got some sleeves on this afternoon. He had the cutoff on One earlier. Four. Again, returns Side down out. the line to the forehand. It is the stronger side, but you're making him run and move and hit. 4-1. Four. Four Side out. A little miss hit there from Ben Johns, trying to flatten that backhand dink out down the line to the Alshon forehand. One more. Just wide from Alshon Side there, out. so he's had three swings at a forehand in a row and hasn't made any of them. Four one. Point. And Ben Johns continuing to take. Heavy swings at that serve. 5-1. Oh, my. Ben Johns got himself back in control on that rally and then has a sitter, but it kisses off the tape. How in the world he got himself back in control here? Especially after this ball yes. here. Both players were in trouble there. And there's a beautiful move by Alshon. Tall, but quick. Two, five. Oh, my. Ben is smiling a little bit as he goes back because he knew he was in trouble. And Alshon's had that spot Five, open a couple times. He was successful on the first one, misses that one. He's got to put that one in the tank. Know that it's there. Oh. So the forehand is betraying Point. Alshon a bit here in game number one. 6-2. Six, six, Odd miss with a little backhand drop from Ben Johns. You don't see that very often, especially wide. My goodness, look at that Side shot. Out. And then, as you talked about earlier, Dom, Alshon ran out of room with how wicked that cross court and then the ball taking off with the top spin to the side. Scary good. 
We had a conversation with Kyle McKenzie at breakfast this morning about receiver. that shot from Ben Johns and that roll and how much spin he creates on it. And it showed right there on that cross court. Yeah, beautiful ball. Uh, Kyle McKenzie was going to call this morning, but uh, the rain said no. He'll be back with me tomorrow. But right now it is Ben Johns in the lead. We'll be back after this. One time out. Welcome back, everybody. Two Great start for that man right there. Time in. Ben Johns up Seven, big two. in game number one of this first men's semifinal. Side out. So the Alshon timeout gets the ball back. Unlike doubles, you don't have to fight through two, which you have to sometimes after the timeout. And let's see if Alshon can put something together. That's just. Side out. It is, Dave. We talked about it earlier. It's just like a fly swatter with him. He just, yeah. he's so loose with it. But he can do whatever he wants, go wherever he Seven wants. Two. Just goes inside out backhand. And that table tennis background really helps with shots like that. Point. Tennis players aren't used to doing that. So if you bring, you know, a little eight something two. from everything in your background there, and it is 8-2 after the missed return. Wow, I mean, Point. that ball right there. But again, that's a veteran move from Ben Johns, right? He does not hit that ball 100%. That was hitting at about 70%. He sees Alshon's late coming up. He Nine creates two. some shape to it. That ball dips down at his feet. He's got to hit up on it, miss hits it. With the wind at his back, that's going to go right well deep, so. Alshon started out with a gorgeous Two return nine. down the line, but he is in a seven point hole. Point. Make that six. Three nine. Make that five. A little love off the tape for Alshon. He'll take point. it. Make that five, so Point. three quick points. Ben John's not five, a nine. frequent timeout user though, so uh, we will play on. Side Ooh, there's out. a good look at a chance to keep that run going there. Alshon can't find the two-handed backhand, so Ben nine, John's nine, back five. with the ball within two of closing out game number one. Point. That's a ball that's got to be made. Yeah, he wants that one back because that's an easy ball for him. He's just, again, that's what Ben Johns does to you. He forces you to try and hit that five. perfect, and you end up in the net with it. Good Side pressure out. from Alshon saves a game point. Too good from Alshon pulling Ben Johns from two sideline. Yeah, it's a good job again, like you said, Dave, of Alshon. If he's going to be successful, that's a good it's read a right there. Johns didn't have the ATP, so he flipped high over the post. Alshon able to control it, and there we go with that forehand from Alshon. We saw him have success with that early. Now he's found it again. So is it too late to find the forehand? 7-10, save the game point at 10-5. And that one just misses wide. I saw the ball in. Oh, I'm we have a, that looked out on my call point. and we have an overturn there. 8-10. Roger Workman says, I saw that out. That ball's really close I saw on. The ball in. Okay, so Roger has seen consecutive Side balls out. in, and uh, 
Ben is playing through okay. it here. 10-8, game point number two. Let's serve, as long as it clears the kitchen, we'll replay. Side out. That's a good deep return from Alshon after a very tough serve. Two game point save. Eight, ten. About an overturn in the middle of this. And he's just creeping back in is Alshon. And another miss Point. return, and we are at 9-10. 9 10. And Alshon had a look at a forehand there and did Side not out. execute it. No, and Ben Johns counters it so well. Again, the inside out forehand. 10 9. So a 10-5 game point, a 10-8 game point. Here comes a 10-9 game point. Oh, and all shots there, but point pulls eight. it wide. Right so nine. good comeback from Alshon, aided by some missed returns from Ben Johns, but it doesn't matter. He still got to 11 with a two-point lead, and he takes game number one of semifinal number one on the men's side, 11-9. Welcome back, everybody. Thrilled to have you with us. Dave Fleming, Dom Catalano, and just a look at the Perseus Yola paddle with the, the inspection sticker on there. All the paddles are being reviewed before the later stages of the rounds and the quarters and semis Game and two. so forth. Time so uh, zero, zero. we will play through. And a great start for Christian Alshon. Again, a good pace right there on the ball. He takes something off it, hits a spot with it. Ben Johns bending over almost too far, trying to get that. Good execution by Alshon, and then he misses his serve by three feet wide. You don't see a wide serve in the program hardly ever. Like that is a that's not a unicorn, not and that not three wide. feet yeah. wide either. Yeah, that's that's pad. That's like a unicorn, and then a uh, Ben felt so bad that it was three feet wide that he's like, try again. Can't really do that in the pro game, a do-over. So he, ex there's wow. zero percent chance Ben is trying to give him the ball back either. Just to be clear, so a couple of wonky serves to say the least there. Oh my, what a get from Alshon, and then Ben said, I, you know, bravo, and then get that out of here. Right. Zero Nothing much one. he could do with it. Boy, that just ripped off the line there. So Johns, these are into the wind, okay? Mm -hmm. So he hit one, one. a huge serve to win a 10-9 service point against Martinez Vic earlier. And now hits that one. Ooh, headhunter. Great job by Ben Johns getting out of the way of that ball right there. So smart. Man, that's a tough dodge there because you're not expecting that ball in that location. And Ben just calmly goes back. That's one that could uh, get the ire up of some people. It's not on purpose, but uh, something to think about. Side out. One, two. Point. We'll miss it on the yeah. return from Ben Johns. But again, Alshon is also putting a lot of pressure on Johns with his serve as well. That was a weird ball flight yeah. from Alshon there on the ball that sort of got caught up into the wind there and then stayed down and in. Two, two. Oh my, that was in. Oh. <laughs> oh, did Sean. we just see a tomahawk off the bounce winner? We did. Yeah, yeah, we did. Absolutely. Ben John's ball stayed in. It, it hits the sideline about a foot from the net. And Alshon two, two. does go tomahawk. Cross court winner ends up in the first row.
Great slide and get on the first one, but can't Tag track out. down the next. So uh, back and forth we go, still two apiece in game two. two. That Point. sails a bit deep. You see Ben Johns here in Austin wearing the burnt orange shorts there Three, for the two. locals. They love their burnt orange. The Longhorn fans certainly do. Right out. Two, three. Again, pressure on the serve, short return from Johns. Alshon able to come in and dictate the point. That's why, in three, especially three. in singles, that serve is so important. Oh my. Oh, oh good an ATP. I thought the ball was wide over there, but Johns right plays out. it and added entertainment value for all of us. Thank you. Just beautifully done around the post. He dots the line. You got a ball? You happy with that one? Okay. Time it in. Okay. Got three, a new three. ball in play. Side out. Well, Sean was in trouble because of the serve placement. Three, three. Just filthy. It's too good. I mean, you think he's going to pull that back Side cross out. court and then he just levels it out and goes flat down the line. With pace three, three. and on the and and on the line yeah. that you just talked about, down the line's a general turn. <laughs> Point. Follows that up with a service winner, so it is Ben Johns up four three here. See that on the four, scoreboard. Three. Chooses to go body. That works out as he Point. gets the error off the forehand from Alshon, and now it is Ben Johns creeping a couple ahead. It's the Ben Johns pattern. When he feels the ball's going out, both hands go down yeah. with the paddle, and he's like, I'm letting that go. Five, Don't touch three. it. We are not going to let my paddle accidentally no. hit it. Wow. That is just a Point. huge serve there from Johns. And he knows Time that the receiver. wind will Six hold three. that up a little One bit. Minute. So he is swinging like a banshee yeah. on these and getting winners. So Ben Johns up 6-3 here in game number two. That man, Alshon, has called timeout, needs to rally to force a game number three. We are back. We are in Austin, and we have so much more fun in store for you. If you want to see the whole slate, grab that QR code. But as we talked about earlier, Major League Pickleball coming up next, Daytona Beach. Then, hello, Utah, heading to the Selkirk Red Rock Open. Newport Beach for doubles. Doubles only out there. And then the North Carolina Open. Can't wait to be up there. Seeing a lot of good effort from North Carolina players. Saw Brooke Buckner earlier, Colin Schick last right week. North Carolina's coming. They're going to love to be in their home state representing. Yes. So if we're near you, get your tickets. And if you're a player, come play where the pros play. A ball skipped right yes. off the line on Alshon right there. Side out. He gave it a uh, lengthy little stare, but uh, that ball flight plus that skid, there's no doubt what it hit. Johns misses his, one of his favorite shots, actually, that inside out forehand. He'll roll it if he's in the corner or smoke it Three, like that six. one, but uh, does not find the court. Alshon needs to go right here. I didn't. I don't know what Did happened there. Neither one of us saw it. So no Point. one saw it. Literally no one on the court saw it, so it's good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 
All right. Because John's asked both referees Four, because six. it by, got by him so yeah, fast he, he didn't see around. it. No. What hands from Ben Johns. That is the exact right play from Christian Alshon. He just got beat. Hands. And again, what do we say that Ben Johns does better than most? Is it anticipation? anticipation right? That Jinx. You put your hand up, babe. <laughs> That's the right answer, brother. Ooh, and there's the Alshon reach. Point. But Johns was ready for the one before it. And we are at 7-4. But then Dave, he, he anticipates better than anyone for the most part, but then he does something Seven with more. it, right? So he anticipates and then he goes hard cross court or he punches flat down the line. And Alshon tries for a very difficult ball on the move there, tried to bring that back cross court. That comes up short and it is 8-4. Johns has doubled up Alshon here in game two of the semifinals. Eight, four. Alshon with a little dainty drop shot there that works. Dainty. Dainty. Uh, I, I like that one. Thank you. It, it was very dainty. Soft. And accurate. Perfect. All right, 4 8. Yeah, and that started with a problem with the two hander way too high. And again, Alshon trying to go cross court, cross body, and just not successful with that right Eight, now. Four. No points again on the Alshon serve. I don't know I if that was a I thumb up. I think, I think it was we a got a thumb up, up for good. Not yeah. an out. It was a thumbs up from yeah. Alshon as Ben Johns paints the sideline. 9-4. Nine, Nine, four. Four. Wicked cross court and Ben Johns is staring at a championship Sunday point. And we, for the air quotes, tweener king, have not seen a tweener from Alshon. And this could be the last rally of this match. 10 4. And it is on another match. another match ends with Seven a missed four. return. Mm -hmm. Ben Johns wins a triple crown last week and is back on Sunday in singles. Got pushed in game one, 11-9, but uh, had the lead throughout in game number two, wins at 11-4. We'll have a couple of Johns on the court and talk to the winner when we come back. Welcome back, everybody. Top seeds advance in our first two semis. We had Anna Lee Waters get there, and now Ben Johns has made his way to Sunday. So we've got two Johns, Hannah Johns, ready to talk to her brother, Ben. Welcome back, everyone, to Championship Court, where Ben Johns is moving on to Championship Sunday. Ben, you played Christian Alshon, who has incredible athleticism. What do you know that you need to do well going up against somebody like that? Uh, yeah, I'd say first, uh, really well done by Christian to, to get here. He beat a couple of very solid players uh, to be in the semis here. So I knew he was kind of probably on a hot streak, playing well for sure. Uh, so I think it was mostly about coming out strong um, and definitely not letting him get ahead to begin with. Well, uh, sometimes the only play is to go right at the person in front of you, and you pulled off a few matrix moves in this match. How important is that uh, as a quality in a player? Uh, yeah, you know, dodgeball definitely comes into play in pickleball. Uh, Christian has v very easy power, uh, so it comes quickly. And, uh, yeah, that's definitely a play you have to be aware of at all times. Uh, but, you know, if you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. So. <laughs> well, Ben, speaking of which, 24 is how old you're going to be turning on Saturday, which means you've spent about one-third of your life playing pickleball. <laughs> what do you think about that, and what does pickleball mean to you in this life? Uh, you know, it's, it's really been incredible. I, I have no idea what I'd be doing right now if I wasn't playing pickleball but I've been playing since I was uh, just about 17 years old so yeah a ton of my life has been composed of playing pickleball and uh, it's meant a lot to me it's been really fun and I can't wait for uh, everything else I can do with it. Congratulations we'll watch you compete on Sunday next up we have Catherine Parento taking on Elise Jones don't go anywhere.
there. I really like these black and gray courts we have here. And there's the aerial shot of this gorgeous place to play pickleball. We're in the cap city of the great state of Texas and we've had some really good singles here today. And you know, we, we talked about it, Dom. We wondered, man, it's hard to go from start, stop, go play at this other place, come back. What's the weather gonna be? Am I really gonna get to play? Well, the answer is yes. And Dom, take us through how these players got here, especially Elise Jones, who she knocked out today. Well, Elise Jones started off playing Krista Gechiva. She won three and nine against her in the first round. Then she actually had a bye because Yana Grechkina pulled out and withdrew. Okay. So that put her up against the three seed Irina Tereshenko. And on paper, Tereshenko, the veteran, the singles veteran, the veteran of pickleball in general, yes. And Elise Jones did nothing less than win against her. 11-9, 11-9. Grinds out the victory to earn the spot against Catherine Parento. Um, you know, Parento is just playing so well right now. It's going to be a tough challenge for Jones. I think the first two, three points are going to dictate the whole match here. And seeing how Elise Jones can handle the pressure of Parento. So I think that's a, a, a key here for Jones. The first two or three, see where she's at. If she's in there and in those points, I think it's going to be a tight one. If not, I could see Parento running away. All right. Well, they've played three backdraw matches in their career against each other. Parento's won all three Time times. Zero, zero. Catherine Parento to serve. Let's play pickleball. And the backhand of Jones is likely to be that target, isn't yes. it, for Parento? Yes, we were talking before we got back on air and thinking that's going to be where Parento attacks. And right off the bat it is, but Parento goes a little wide there. Yeah, just a little too much angle there. Zero, one. That is the way you handle. You want to go to my backhand? I don't have a backhand over here. I'll run completely around it. <laughs> I mean, she almost runs off court to hit it. She ran off screen. Side out. Had a good look at that. You know, we, we actually talked earlier today to a couple of pro one, players. One. You know, forehands and serves. You know, you can you can go a long way in singles. Yeah, good ball by Parento. She gets in on the body of Jones. Yeah, really chopping those feet to be able to try and get in position to hit a forehand from well off the court. Side out. Uh, I do. Now, this is a start I wanted for Elise Jones right here. Tight, good, good points. She ran around a forehand, hit a winner. I like this, and I One, think she's going to be right in this whole this whole match. Look at her hustle. Oh, Just almost can't gets quite there. get there. And the effort will always be absolute everything in the tank every time with Elise Jones. Side out. Correction, side out. Two, Two one. Too good from Parento there. A lot of open court on a ball with not a lot of pace, Dom. Yeah, she controlled it well. And again, watch her just roll this. When she does that, she's on and she's going to be dangerous. Three, one. And just a workman light. Smart approach by Catherine Parento here. That is talking about a game plan and executing a game plan right there. It's backhand, backhand, backhand. I got a ball high enough, and Four, I'll hit the one. winner. Four, 
Short. Now chase it in, and that looks like a Yola paddle's going on the ground, and it most team. definitely is. Short so five, on the other side of the court, as Parento's like, oh, okay. I'm happy to hear that. So Elise Jones under fire from the red hot Catherine Parento. Can she throw some water on it? We'll find out. There's Catherine Parento again on point with her precision and Time up big to Five start one. game number one of our second ladies semifinal. And Elise point. Jones can't make the backhand volley there and it is 6-1 Parento. She hit that backhand Six, volley one. before it even hit the ground. She was already turning around walking to the baseline. Tries with the southpaw, and you know she's going to try and track it down, but Parento having her way, drops the Seven, ball on the one. forehand side and then hits into the open court. 7-1. 8-1. That is blisteringly accurate. And again, she's hitting these balls at about 70%, but she's just hitting her spots, right? It's, it's not about how hard. You can throw 100 in baseball, but if you don't hit a spot, Eight, it doesn't one. matter. Greg Maddox never broke 90, and one of the best pitchers in baseball. Same thing here with Parento. Parento, she's hitting her spots. 9-1. Nine, nine, Ten one, and it is all the Canadian right here. Game point in record time for Ten, Catherine one. Parento. Side out. And Jones hits a two-handed swinging volley where the left hand went flying off of it in the follow-through, but stops a game point there. So can she chip away? Big mountain to climb. One, ten. Just wide for Jones and Parento's just waiting. Gonna keep throwing the ball in the corner of the backhand until I get one I ten, can come one. in behind. Just really smart strategically for her. Side That's out. a great deep return from Jones. You're giving hope to one of the scrappiest players in the game who will one, grind ten. her way out of any deficit. It's the last thing that Catherine Parento needs to do here. Oh, good hustle from Point. Catherine, but uh, too good on the overhead. Lise Jones, big volleyball background, so she's used to clobbering things up above her head. Nice overhead there. 2-10. Two, ten. Two, ten. I mean, a little bit off the tape, but just impressive control and not moving extra at all. Just Parento just in command. Another shot to close out game one. And she'll do it with a beautiful backdoor forehand volley. If you wondered what Catherine's fire play in Daytona look like. Folks, it looked just like that. Yes. She is on a mission in 2023, and Elise Jones comes in here with a great victory over Irina Tarashenko and just got run over in game one here. Impressive for CP in game number one. Welcome back, everybody. There's the referees getting in position. Charlie Muller and James Benjamin James Farmer. Zero, zero. Lise Jones trying to find some answers. Catherine Parento has all the questions. And the question is, what do you do to beat me? And the answer right now is not very much. No, it was all Parento zero, in game zero. number one, winning by nine. It is like a surgeon at work right now as Parento just is carving everything, placing One, everything zero. perfectly with just such good precision. Like, and even right there, she gets pressured, Dave, on the ball from 
Jones, but she just is like, okay, don't do too much with it. Drop it back in and get another ball, and she drops a perfect ball. Yeah, she goes from way behind in the point to ahead and then gets a mistake. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, no. Shut up. Jeez. Okay. I mean, that landed in the kitchen, Dom. <laughs> Inside out, cross court, in the kitchen. Three, On her back foot. Yes. You don't teach that. You shouldn't teach that. No. Stop teaching that. Oh, Point. she's loose right now. Did you see that roll? She took that and just whipped that from the hip. Straight up, follow through. Four zip. Four. That's this a is a freight train. Point. And that stays in as Jones thinks that's got to go out, but Time it does somehow stay five. in. And Zero. the nightmare start that Elise Jones wouldn't even think of. And, and I'm told on that last ball, it might have grazed the paddle of Elise oh. Jones. So uh, we have a lot of great sponsors here. Don, great game in the PPA Tour. And our title sponsor, of course, is Carvana. And here we're at the Onyx Austin Showdown. And there hasn't been much to say, Five except, no. my goodness, Five Catherine zero. Parento, you are playing huge. And now a serve I'll kisses off the, the back edge Point. of the line. Elise is wondering, was that in? She gets a nod from the referee, 6 nothing. Six, it's just like zero. you said, Dave, it's a freight train coming through, and it's all Catherine Parento. Nice ball there from Elise Jones. Side out. I mean, the crowd wants more Elise Jones. We always all want more Elise Jones, but this is just too good on the other zero, side. Six. Okay, first time in a while that Elise Jones was more dictating the flow there, Dom. Yeah, she did a good One, job on that six. point, but again, Parento had a ball she could have done something with. She didn't get everything on it. Beautiful shot from Side Parento out. there, and a drop is usually the right spot, but just nice and smooth from six. Parento One. with the two in it backhand. 6-1. And it's just corner pocket to corner pocket. And when you see Parento making her movements, you watch her movements, when she's very deliberate with her movements, that's when she's feeling good, right? You watch her and she's very deliberate. She, you, you see what she's going to do. That's when you know she's in her zone. And strategically just so good. You're just seeing like that that right there, that that cut back hand. You see her two hands up, and then when she cuts that, she separates, right? She keeps that balance. And when you see her doing this and feeling one. like that, that's when she's feeling good. And oh. curls the forehand down the line, a little fist pump, and Time out. Elise team. Jones Short paddled time. down again. One. This is a absolute clinic from Catherine Parento here in the semis. Welcome back, everyone. There is the conductor of the freight train right there, Catherine Parento. 9-1, already has an 11-2 game one under her belt and firing away at the backhand again, and we are at Championship Sunday point. 10, 1. Elise Jones flying around the court, but Catherine Parento shows why she is the hottest player on tour right now on the women's side. She is going to Sunday again. Impressive, and guess what? Anna Lee wanted the rematch. Well, guess what? She's getting it, and she's getting that lady right there on Sunday, and it is going to be epic. That's going to be a fun championship Sunday on the women's side of things. So Catherine Parento will 
joyfully go talk to Hannah John. She cruises into Sunday, and it's only Thursday afternoon. Welcome back, everybody. Sometimes a player is just on fire. You wonder if it carries from tournament to tournament. It certainly has with Catherine Parento standing by with Hannah Johns. Welcome back, everyone. Catherine Parenteau is headed to Championship Sunday, and you know Elise Jones very well. She had a couple of great wins today in today's draw. Uh, what did you know you need to do well in this match? I think I, I had to stay aggressive. I know she, she's a beast. She likes to run side to side, so she's really good, and I knew she was not going to give up. So I was just I just stayed aggressive, and I was uh, in the zone. And I, th I think it's just from the past two weeks, I think my confidence is still pretty high for the past two weeks, so it's been helping me. Speaking of the last few weeks, you've been playing extremely hot. You came away with the double crown at the last tournament. How good do you feel about your game right now? I feel pretty good about it. Um, I think I'm just going to keep working and see what happens this weekend. Well, of course, what everyone wants to talk about is you taking down Annalie at the last tournament. Does that make the pressure flip-flop for you now going into Sunday to play Annalie again? I think so, a little bit. I think some people are going to expect maybe me beating her again or maybe her getting a little bit of a revenge. So I think it's going to be a really fun match, and I look forward to playing AL. She plays, she's amazing, so it'll be a really fun match. Either way, we know we're going to see a battle. Good luck on Sunday, Catherine. With that, we're going to bring you our last semifinal. The men are up next. There's a good look at Onisha Smith, In our head referee. Thomas Tadler is the second. Let's play pickleball. Point. And Stax Rude pushes the first return of the day One, deep. Garnett will play in a hurry if things are going well. Side out. Zero one. Point. And there's that forehand of Stax Rude. So good. Hides it so well, can do so many, has so many options from that forehand. Oh, beautifully done there from Garnett. Running forehand cross court. Seems to be the shot of the day. We saw Martinez Vick against Ben John, certainly Anna Lee Waters, and there Connor Garnett. And there he is again, only keeps it down the line. All right, we get it, you're athletic. Really impressive. He heard you. I never said anything except it's going to be a great <laughs> match. So settle down, everybody. Oh, my. Oh, oh no. No, it didn't. <laughs> it died as soon as it got over the net. Referee Just timeout. clips the tape, drops over. Okay, we have a referee timeout. Oh, where did it hit may be the question. Did it? slide back and hit that black bar down Before below. Before it hit the ground. Yes. If it did, then that's a replay. So we may have a it replay it, here. Okay, so it did hit the ground, so. That's clean. It hit the bar. So that is a point for so, Garnett. If it had. No. You can challenge it. So Garnett is asking, can I challenge it, which he can. So the ruling here appears to be that it hit the ground, then the bar before it hit the ground again. Now they're discussing. Yes, and that's a, re that's a replay. Right. We had that happen at Nationals, and I thought it was the wrong call, but it, I learned it is the right yep. call. It has to, I believe, bounce again after that yeah. before it hits so we will get a replay here Anisha Smith all over the call there great job by both of our referees getting together and making the right call yep. Side out. and sometimes you get ball don't lie so the ball don't lie it uh, there you go one two here one, stacks root oh just again Point. that forehand Comes out of nowhere. And he controls it so well too, right? Shapes it so two well, two. gets on top of it. Oh, right there. And that's Point. the, those are the options, right, Dave? So he has multiple options. He'll go inside out or he'll pull that Three, back two. like he did right there. And that, so then you're like, I can't keep you're giving this ball. guy it's candy in the middle. I gotta hit a, out. 
better return and Garnett hits the perfect return that slides off Two, the three. back edge of the baseline. Fight. And then hits a serve on the baseline. All right. That's what it's going to take to beat these guys. And three, three. Garnett cannot wait for the score to be called. Flying all over the court, but doesn't have an answer there. He he jumped into the 360 club there as well. Three three. Oh, Side Stacksford out. had it measured, but the tape said no. Stacksford had to play his buddy Tayas today, his doubles three, three. partner. So those are never fun, but he came through that. Point. And just deep, so. This match is on warp speed here. <laughs> and that's the Point. sexy shot we've had coming into the game. A lot of people got excited about Colin Schick doing all those backhand drop shots four, and four. It's a smart playing singles. Yes. And Garnett tried it himself it's there. Another conversation with Onisha Smith. Six, I can't four. imagine what there was to talk about there. Maybe it was in the kitchen, but it didn't matter. So, so Garnett is frustrated, perhaps, with how quickly. I can. I'm guessing now how quickly Stacksroot is serving after the score call. Well, both of them are getting to the line so quick, and I think the score was called wrong. And so now the, our, both of our referees are getting together to make sure the score is correct. And that's again, Onisha Smith and Thomas Tadler. It's getting this all squared away for us here. He agrees that it's 6-4. Right now it's 6-4. Okay. 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 He, sa okay, he said so it's there's 6 four. The board also says 6 four. If it's 5 four, look. Okay. Okay. So there's score. Yes. I will mark it down. Confusion right here. All right. And both players agreed to it too. Five, and four. Stacksher did too that it's 5 four. And my goodness, the referees are involved. Now we've got a fault on the feet there of Garnett. Six, so 6 4 now. My goodness. Yeah. And there's that left handed hitter right there. Smacks it cross court. So let's just play from 4 6 here, Dom, and go from here. Right. You good with that? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, I'm good too. And that's what I'd like to see a little more of from Garnett is the cat and mouse. Let's not go so hard, so fast, so much pace all the time. Slow down. And I think he needs to slow his game down, too, as far as body movement and trying to go so fast. As I say that, he rips a two-handed winner yeah, down the he's line. He's a frenetic player, so I don't know that he's going to uh, listen to that. He is ready to go. Six apiece. Six, six. Gets a miss serve, so fed. Also likes to play fast, and he'll can carry on here. Seven six. Side oh, out. That's one that Carnot would love to have back a Tui that he could take just about anywhere. So six seven, six, seven. two seed versus eleven seed. Oh, there's that inside Five. out again, Dave. You talked about it early that when Staxford has that dialed in, it's so lethal. I mean, that angle was absolutely seven, seven. ridiculous. Seven apiece. Point. It's just, it's just, this match, all this match so far, this first game is just streaks. Eight, yes. seven. Both these players going on streaks.
Max Rude is everywhere. Best point of the match goes to him. The Argentinian looking great right there, and it is Garnett that is going to call timeout. So Federico Staxrud down, as you mentioned. Now comes flying back. Garnett's going to think about it. We'll be back with the end of game number one. My name is Dom, you don't want to miss any of the action. Subscribe to the PPA Tour YouTube channel, and there's prizes, too. So just do it. Don't miss this great action. I mean, this match is so fast paced. Like as soon as that commercial was over, we were serving. Oh, I like, didn't. I was like, guys, I got a little promo to do here. They don't care. Do you no. think they care about me right now? Zero. Nothing. Oh, and then Garnett misses it. But of course, all parties will head there now. Actually, Staxrude took a second there. Did a little little circle. Point. And went for a bigger serve. So kudos to him there. And he's got a game point on his paddle. 10-7. Boy, and another seven. missed return for, we have seen a lot of those today. If you play singles, folks, work on your serve. It's a big differentiator. The two seed, Staxrud, wins game number one. Welcome back, everybody. Thrilled to have you with us. Dave Fleming with Dominic Catalano. Dom, that took 12 minutes. We had a commercial timeout. We had lots of referee discussion. We had 18 points scored. Are there dinner reservations on these boys' plates? I don't know, but it was a fast-paced game. They're chomping at the bit to serve. They're getting to the baseline, and they are ready to go. They're playing ready pickleball. Yeah, I, I, these are the guys you like to golf with here. <laughs> Get to your ball and go. Zero Good one. Garnett right there. These guys would not have any pitch clock violations in the new MLB no, rules no. this year. No. Everything needs to be quicker in the world one right zero. now, and these boys are right there with it. And there's just... That's point. If you think you're going to see the other one, Dom, then he roll, pulls it down the line. It's just such a good ball. Again, it's the running around the Two forehand. Zero. So many options from there. Everyone's asking. Staxrud thought he made that. Everyone on the court agrees he did not. <laughs> so we'll carry on. Zero two. That's good two-handed yeah. backhand there from Garnett. Again, not trying to do too much with it. It's a nice dipping action as it gets to the net. One, two. Can't put a couple together, right so Staxford will get the ball back, and here we go. Oh my goodness, that is a Side gift. Out. One, two. That's in, oh no. Oh, okay, so we have, we have Garnett absolutely thinks this ball was in. Oh, it is overruled by Tom Tadler. No challenge. No challenge, so, and we're not saying there is, we're saying he cannot challenge today. So, here we go, 2-2. Two, two. Two, two. The overrule stands, ball looked good. Let's just get the call right, and there comes Connor Garnett, so. 3-2 Garnett now. Yeah, nice job, Garnett closing ground, taking that ball out of the air, not allowing Saxer to set up. And that sails deep. Point. So after the overturn, which appeared to be the right call by Tadler, it's 4-2 Garnett. Really nice forehand 
or excuse me, backhand flick to set up the backhand flick. It wasn't a bad drop though from Garnett. No. Staxer did uh, this ball, not the ball before yeah. that, that he dropped was beautiful. That is great court coverage from Garnett right there. Another short return, another two-handed backhand pass. Point. Garnett looking good here in game two, looking to force a third game here. We haven't had many third games here no. today, Dave. Five, two. Be nice to have one here. Side out. Had a look there, couldn't make it. Again, this is the final, semi-final of the day. Winner gets Ben Johns on Sunday. Two, five. Oh my, and Staxrude got away with a miss hit two-handed backhand in the middle of that rally, Dom. Yeah, I think Time Garnett played, might have played an out ball in the middle of all that, like you were saying, and it allowed Staxrude back in the point, and now he's back within two. So we got a timeout on the court. It is chaos in this match, but it is high-speed chaos, folks. We'll be right back after this. We are back, and of course, we're serving immediately, and another Point. missed return. So Garnett's given a few away here, both in game one and now here in Four, five. game two. And Oh, boy, there was... <laughs> Gar Garnett was flailing his arms to stay out of the kitchen and then hits the deck. Goes to two knees down at the kitchen line. Stays out, but then eventually ends up on two knees. And we're tied at five. And that's just too good. Point. Again, short return in the center of the court. Right. You're just leaving too much open for Staxer to do some damage with. Six, five. That's Point. wide and... Again, we got 12 points scored in record fashion here. Seven five. Yep, side out. Stacks root misses the serve off the tape. If you're new to pickleball, that ball has got to clear five, the kitchen seven. after it goes over the tape, so that is a fault. And that goes off the tape, but Point. in the favor of Garnett. So we're at 6-7. Six, 6-7. Seven. Six, seven. Just catches side the sideline on the return there from Stacks. We've seen that a little bit today, the hard cross-court forehand return. Too good there Point. from Staxford again. That carved backhand drop shot that we saw Schick do so much last weekend, and now all of a sudden oh. we're noticing it more and more. All the rage now, Dom, and yeah. saw that Garnett was unable to come forward after that big serve in the last rally, and now he's in trouble again. Yep. Staxford just such a good mover on the court. And again, just placing that ball perfectly in the open space. Nine, six. And look oh, at that. Wow. One inch inside the sideline, and we are at match point for Federico Staxrude. Ten, six. And the flying Garnett say, not right now, you don't. He's got some work to do here, though, and let's see if he can streak some together and get back in this. Not going to happen on that one right there. He gets a little too much top on that, goes into the net, and it'll be a, another match point here for Staxrude. Second shot at going to Sunday. 10-6. Side 
One of the first forehands that he has missed in some time. So Garnett gets a second save. And a point that looked a lot like what Staxrude has been using. Chase down your good first ball. And do not allow your opponent to set their feet, take that ball out of the air, punish it. Couple roll forehands from Garnett have not caught the court. And a third chance here for Staxrude. Oh. And it is an ATP for the match. Garnett was there but couldn't block it back. And the rare sighting, an ATP walk off for Staxrude, and he is going to Sunday. The one seed will play the two seed on the men's side. It's gonna be a rematch of matches we've seen earlier in the year. And the one seed will play the two seed on the women's side. So the singles setting up for some delicious matchups on Sunday, Don. Oh yeah, you know what? We've seen them before, but they just keep getting better and better. So it's gonna be a lot of fun on Sunday. So. We'll have one more conversation with Hannah Johns, and that will be with that man, Federico Staxrude, moving on. Welcome back, everybody. The last two winners, very impressive. Catherine Parento and this guy, Federico Staxrude, standing by with Hannah Johns. Welcome back, everyone. One last time where Federico Staxrod is headed to Championship Sunday. Congratulations. And Connor Gar Garnett, one of the most athletic players on tour. He came out here firing, and he had some good wins today. What did you know you'd need to bring to the table? Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's every match. Uh, if you don't bring the, your 100%, you're not going su to succeed. That's what happened to me the last uh, two tournaments. I wasn't maybe prepared. I wasn't mentally prepared. And uh, just there's other players that are going to be here and going to win uh, if you're not 100%. During the first game, the ball dribbled over the net uh, on your side. It hit the center pole. Walk us through that call. What was going on there? I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> That's it. I just heard replay. That was like, I'll, I'll, I'll take it all day. <laughs> so I just, I just stayed there. I knew it was a replay. So I just uh, was patient and that's it. So I have to ask, did you actually know about that rule until it happened? I don't know. You know, it's, uh, the, the game is so new that uh, you have to always ask because maybe you have a chance. Uh, and the refs no more. So I just uh, yeah, ask the ref. You'll take it. I love it. I love it. Well, speaking of finals, you were in the first three finals of the year, and then you missed out on the second, uh, the two after that. You're now back in another final at our sixth tournament of the year. What do you want to do this time around? Got the gold again? Yeah, I mean, winning is like an addiction. Once you do it, you want to do it again and again. Uh, yeah, uh, it's gonna be Ben. So he's uh, he's a better play He's a good player, but he's even better in finals. So I have to really be 100% prepared for that. And uh, yeah, I gotta play every point like it's the last one, and we'll see what happens. Best of luck, Federico. Good luck, guys. That is all from us. Take us away, Dave. Thank you, Hannah Johns. Thanks, Fed. I'll always love Fed. He's honest. I didn't know, and you know, he he admitted. And you know, I like to see when the players like. He didn't have his best and he just admitted and he wanted to have his best and you know what he brought it in a big way here today. So Dom, somehow Mother Nature let us get the singles in today and we are thrilled that we did. It's now 75 and sunny out there. I know, it's like beautiful out right yeah. now. We did not think we were gonna get anything no. in today and we get the whole thing in, so. So men's and women's singles was today. Tomorrow starting at 10 a.m. will be the mixed pro doubles. It's gonna be great, lots of new partnerships in there. Hello, Newman's back together. That's gonna to be fun with Riley and Lindsay. Men's and women's pro doubles on Saturday. Championship Sunday is already set up with two delicious matchups. So for the whole crew back at Tennis Channel Studios for the great Hannah Johns, for my man Dom Catalano, who will start the day tomorrow morning with Drew Felios. I am Dave Fleming. Cannot thank you enough for watching the PPA. We will see you tomorrow. Have a great Thursday night. Bye-bye.